causes to reflect on the impact Jackie Robinson had on the sport, on our country, and on our lives. Breaking baseball's color barrier, his impact went much further than home runs, RBIs, and stolen bases. And his stats pale in comparison to the courage shown as he broke that color barrier. Jackie, baseball, and the country thanks you and recognizes you this week. And today, everybody wears 42. And a day game here in Birdland at Camden Yards, Oriole Park, with the fans coming in. And they'll be wearing three or four layers today because it's going to be a cold one here at the ballpark, but blue, sunny skies to go with it. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Thorne. The Orioles rained out, of course, yesterday, along with a lot of other teams on the East Coast. Yesterday was the official day to celebrate Jackie Robinson's breaking of the color barrier. So for Tampa Bay and for the Orioles, that will be done today. We will talk about that in the course of our ball game, And, of course, for Jackie Robinson, a member of the Hall of Fame, one plaque went in originally that did not talk about what he did in breaking the color barrier from the point of view of things off the field. That plaque was changed because not only did he have the great back, and the great legs and a tremendous career. But Jackie Robinson also went through so much in order to get there. And that really is what baseball recognizes today. That's the original plaque for number 42. Nobody, of course, wears 42 anymore. Now, just on his day, which is going to be celebrated a day later here today, will we see that number 42 on all of the players? And uh, Jim Palmer, while we missed the official day yesterday, we get to say thanks to Jackie today. Yeah, and, and I, I kind of learned that early on, Gary, uh, when I went down to Thomasville, Georgia. You saw a little bit of the racial intolerance, the hatred, uh, trying to get go with some of the African-American players to get haircuts. And he ended up going the other side of town. First year in the major leagues, didn't couldn't stay at the hotel in Kansas City, uh, Missouri had to go to Kansas. But I think about all the great players that I played that were African American. One of the reasons I got in the Hall of Fame were because of the Eddie Murrays and the Frank Robinson, and the Paul Blairs, and uh, Kenny Singletons. And, and then you think about uh, all the star games, some of the greatest players I ever pitched against, Aaron and Mays. So, Jackie Robinson, thank you so much. Never had a chance to meet you. Uh, that's one of the great, uh, I guess, things that I'm remiss about in my, my career that he must have really been a special man. A lot of us feel that same way. Would like to have had the opportunity, but we celebrate today and all of the players on the field for this ball game will have number 42 on.
Baseball on Masson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. And by AT&T, rethink possible. Ice under the tarp, on the tarp. When the ground screw got here today, that was took place this morning with the freezing cold temperatures of last night and early today. How about that taking place on April 16th? Take a look at our train game time temperature as we start the ball game today. It is going to be a very chilly 44 degrees, made more so because of some winds that right now are blowing in from center. Visit trainsearch.com to find your local train comfort specialist dealer. It's hard to stop a train, really hard. Second game of the three game set. Middle one rained out. Here's the lineup for Tampa Bay Zobris, Myers, and Joyce, Longoria, Loney, and Jennings, De Jesus, Escobar, and Molina. Loney had the two for four with a double in the other game. And take a look at Miguel Gonzalez, third start of the year. Uh, miserable weather in the first one in Detroit. A little bit, uh, probably same temperature, but much sunnier today. You can see a lot of fastballs, breaking ball. Hasn't really had much of a breaking ball uh, pretty much halftime or for half of last year. ERA obviously elevated the, the fact that he has thrown four home runs already. Very uncharacteristic for Miguel. So see if he can get ahead. And ready to go is Zobris, and he will take the pitch for a strike, and we are underway. Zobris coming in with a 280 average, one for three in the series. He's got a three game hit streak going. He's not done well against Gonzalez, only two for 19 lifetime off him. The off speed pitch will bounce, and a one ball, one strike count. Zobrist, after an outstanding season last year, getting uh, the playing time this season for this ball club at second base. He's moved around in his time with Tampa Bay. Matt Wieters back in behind the plate for the Orioles. Chuck Swing went around on it. Home plate umpire Greg Gibson made the call himself. One and two. So that is one of the key pitches. Uh, that's the split fingered fastball, strikeout, ground ball pitch, get you out of uh, innings. That is what uh, Carlos Beltran hit for a home run because it didn't really have a good one in New York, even though he did get a no decision, ended up uh, giving up three runs. Ball is popped up in the air, first base side, Davis. And Chris will put it away in foul territory. Take a look at the uh, Oriole defense, a little different look. Cruz, uh, David Lowe in center because uh, Adam Jones had to go home yesterday. Game rained out, so he's the DH. Marquecas in right, so gold glove out there. Flaherty, Hardy with a couple of gold gloves. Lombardozzi, Davis, and then Matt Wieters, the gold glover behind the plate. Lowe uh, originally was going to be the DH in the ball game, but Jones came out after having the flu yesterday. Ran around, felt okay, but Buck Showalter said, uh, I don't want him out there in the field. We'll let Jones DH and have low play center. So that switch came after Adam had a chance to go out and work out a little bit. Here's uh, Myers flying out to right, uh, playing in right field rather. He had an 0 for 3 in the opener. Myers with a 1 for 6 lifetime off Gonzalez. 0 1 delivery. And a swing and a miss and a nice breaking ball down and away. So I made a couple of changes uh, and moved a little bit more into the middle of the rubber and when he gets the front shoulder just close just even boy his stuff is much better so New York is a little bit better than Detroit you know, Detroit he gave up seven runs. Oh to deliver for Gonzalez this is the ninth career start against the Rays he has a career two win three loss record with a three nine four ERA last year he went two and one. Against Tampa Bay, ERA just a little over four in those starts against them last season. One ball, two strike delivery coming to Myers, and he'll take the pitch outside. Could not get him to go after that one, and it goes to two and two. Gonzalez here in his home yard at Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Last year went seven and two, real good record in 13 home starts. Overall, 10 and four, ERA of 368. Here at Camden Yards. And the 2 2 delivery and a swing and a miss. A little extra late life. That's what we saw from Wei and Chen struggling with his command. And then right here, pretty much in the middle of the plate, but uh, good movement. And it's not always about the uh, the miles per hour. Does the ball move? So a little late life and the hitter track it. And uh, Will Myers having trouble doing that. So two down here in the first inning. 
And that will bring up Joyce. He's the designated hitter. Matt Joyce in the ball game only had one at bat in game one and ended up going 0 4 1. Lots of day games today around Major League Baseball, including a couple of double headers with all the rainouts that took place yesterday. And Joyce, the off speed delivery, taken outside for a ball. This is a Tampa Bay team that's lost two in a row, and they are struggling at the plate. They started out pretty good offense through the first half dozen games, but over the last eight, they've been outscored 34 to 14 in the last eight ball games. They've won three and lost five. So for Joe Madden's ball club, the offense just has not been there. While of course they've lost three of the starting five pitchers. Yeah, and then everybody's uh, talking very positively, but when you lose some of your better players, uh, a little more difficult to not to compete because they do a great job of this. I mean, what uh, 90 plus five out of the last six years. Started in 2008 when they won 97 games and we ended up going to the World Series last year, 92 games. So they come ready to play. You know they're going to be ready today because they don't like what's happening. And they also know that they're going to have to do a little bit better job of uh, getting some runs on the board. Right there for a strike on the inside corner. And the count will go three and one. Greg Gibson, the home plate umpire for this game. Reputation uh, probably favoring the hitters a little more. Strikes on a little bit. Smaller, perhaps, than some other umpires. We'll see whether or not that holds in this game. Here's the 3 1 delivery on the way, and that is right there. Joyce uh, was ready to take a walk, but he's not going to get it. So back into the count. And of course, when you get a good start like Matt Joyce has, you're hitting 344. Uh, you don't need to get base hits, you just need to get on base. So would have liked to have gone down with Longoria up next. Three ball, two strike count. Shift is on in the infield against him, and he'll take it the other way down the line. Cruz a long, long run. Not going to get there. On to second base goes Joyce, and he is in with a head first slide. So he gets the opposite field, a double on a dying quail down the line. Yeah, you put the shift on uh, where you're playing over in left center, so it's a long, long run. The high sky. I'm not sure if he thought that ball was going to go foul or not, but it does then go foul. And now all of a sudden you get your best uh, RBI guy up as far as uh, average six for 12. Evan Longoria with runners in scoring position. Evan Longoria with a one for four on the first game. He's had uh, five hits, 16 at bats against Gonzalez with a home run. Shift on against him the other way, playing into pull in the infield. The wind, uh, always hard to tell here. Exactly where it's blowing, but probably favoring the right handed hitters and heading out to left field, at least at the moment. Two down. And that breaking pitch will miss outside for a ball. Now Gonzalez getting the first two outs. Now I'll try and work out of this one. He's been a pronounced ground ball pitcher, 49% uh, percent of the outs. A fly ball pitcher, rather, yeah. only 49% of the outs on ground balls. So balls being hit in the air, not uncommon when the Gonzalez is on the mound for the Orioles. And we saw Longoria. He drove in the only run on Monday night, and that was the third time up. Chen threw him a breaking ball, runner at second, and he just leaped on it. So he'll be looking at something inside half and try to hit it hard. He's got tremendous power. To a delivery to him, and that's going to be outside. Gonzalez with first base open, even in the first inning. Pitching as though he may not want to throw a strike to Evan Longoria. And that's that's what the two out base hit does. Miguel may not know exactly the numbers that Longoria, but five for 16, he knows he hits them well. So now you get a little bit careful and you're behind him. 3 0 delivery on the way. Longoria taking, and it's in there for a strike. Longoria comes in as a 272 hitter, lifetime against the Orioles. He's had 21 home runs against the O's in 88 games. On this team right now, he has more homer against the Orioles than any other Ray. Three ball, one strike delivery. And that's there on the inside corner, and he knew it. Three and two. Great location. Well, the better windup, in other words, staying close, your lines better allows him to use the slider. It was really a non pitch first couple of games, and really uh, the, maybe the last two months of 2013. Three ball, two strike count, runner at second is Joyce. And he'll rip that one down the line, and it is a foul ball. It's 
So if we went back to last start, uh, he would have been way over on the third base side. Now he's a little bit more in the middle. But what he finds out is that the fastball up and into Longoria has to really be in. And if it's not, it's going to get hit hard. Very fortunate that ball hooked foul. Uh, back to second base goes Joyce and Longoria back to the plate. And the 3 2 will come again. And Longoria chopper to short, scooped by Hardy, makes the play to Davis. And there we go. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Orioles lineup when we come back. State 95 access north side of the outlet of the Susquehanna. We welcome you here at Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Let's take a look at the Orioles starting lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. Marquegas, Cruz, and Davis, Jones, Wieters, and Hardy, Lola, Berdosi, and Flaherty against the Rays in the opener. Big day for Hardy, three for four. Take a look at Jake uh, Odorizzi. Uh, his uh, fastball, not as much as what Gonzalez was almost 70, breaking ball 23. Alex Cobb, who's on the DL, a uh, very accomplished right handed pitcher, taught him the changeup. So probably throws more changeups. I think Cobb is second than anybody else in Major League Baseball. And uh, the Orioles saw him in that, what, 18 inning game last year? He came in, pitched uh, two plus innings. So he was pitching very well. First start, excellent. Second one, I don't know if it's an epidemic. Archer gave up seven. Gonzalez gave up seven. He gave up seven in Kansas City, a team that he was formerly with. Nick Marquegas leads it off and takes it away for a ball. For Nick, the 0 for 5 in the opener, which was a bit surprising because the Orioles had such a great offensive attack. Seven runs, 13 hits in that game on Monday, beating Tampa Bay 7 to 1. He'll take that one down low. Count goes to 2 and 0. Oh. On the hole, though, for Nick, a great start to the season and anchoring down that leadoff spot for the most part for the Orioles. 24 year old right handers pitch foul back off the screen. But Arizzi has only been seen once, and that was in that game Jim was talking about. Three and two thirds innings. He gave up a no runs, one hit, a walk, and had two strikeouts in the game in relief in that extra inning affair. Yeah, he came in and just made a lot of good pitches. You know, 90 to 92 miles per hour. With the rain out, the Orioles missed David Price. David was supposed to pitch game three. They're going to hold him for the Yankees game tomorrow. Joe Madden said he wanted to get Odorizzi in. Same reason Buck Showalter said he wanted to get Gonzalez in and not go with Tillman. As this is a Chris, Chris Tillman's scheduled day to pitch if we kept him on the regular rotation. But to both managers, as David Price, they just don't want to have too many starters sitting around not throwing. Yeah. And Chris Tillman now is going to be backed up two days. Yeah. Two ball, two strike count. And that ball laced into the gap. He got one up that he could hit. Jennings over to get it. Marquegas a big turn, but he's on with a leadoff single. 
Right. Throw them nothing but fastballs, and you get five, six fastballs. And watch how much in the middle of the plate this one has, and just stays up, and it's a bullet. Two seam fastball. You can see him pull it down so you get that movement, but it stays up, and Nick all over it. So the Orioles get the leadoff man on. That will bring up Cruz in the number two spot. Nelson with a three game hit streak. Me too at a uh, big opener, two for five, double single, RBI, and two runs scored in the first game against Tampa Bay. Odorizzi on the inside corner to him for a strike. Four doubles, two home runs, and seven RBIs for Cruz so far. Orioles leader in RBIs, Chris Davis and Matt Wieters. They both have eight on the year. Short lead at first base. Scoop, nice play to hold the runner at first. Molina getting the duty behind the plate here for this day game. He usually catches David Price. He actually is on. Looks like he's becoming Price's uh, personal catcher. Not a bad guy to hook up with. Oh, he bounces one and backhands it and somehow keeps it in front of him. One ball, one strike out. Marquez right, held at first by Loney. Infield with a shift on, playing Cruz to pull, giving him that right side of the infield. Here's the one-one delivery to him. Pops it up. Third base. Longoria, the nice guy, lots of sun, shades the eyes and makes the kick. Yeah, it's one of those San Francisco Oakland skies. That'll bring up Chris Davis with the Tampa Bay team. Some names in this lineup that have given them some problems. Take a look at our notebook in the Triple Trouble page. J.J. Hardy since 11, 286, 60 hits, the most hits versus any team. For Matt Wieters against the Rays, 318 last year, five homers, 16 RBIs, and he started out the same way the other night. Chris Davis last year, 282, six homers, 18 RBIs against the Rays. He had a one for three double and an RBI in game one. So some triple trouble and more in the lineup for the Rays pitchers in the form of some Orioles who've done some damage. Yeah, Chris Davis, uh, that first away visit to Tampa Bay, first games the Orioles played, and he had three of those home runs to all fields. He'll take the pitch away for a ball. For Udarizi so far, the left handers are seven for 22 off him with a home run. The right handers are six for 21. He's been tagged in the early going in the first couple of ball games that he has pitched last year. Left handers at 293, right handers 208. Davis on a fastball. He moved it from the outside to the inside. Well, that's what they try to do if they can, and out over the plate. You're pitching not too good a result unless you can get to two strikes and get something down out of the strike zone. They try to crowd him. One ball, one strike count, one away. All right, take us on with that base hit at first base. And the pitch is Ooh. at the same location and a called strike. Yeah, that ball. And have you ever thought that Greg Gibson was going to be a uh, hitter's guy? Well, you can erase it right there. Anytime a guy, and we're talking about Molina, brings the ball down that much, you know it was high. But they get the call. But by our box, it hit the corner. Yeah. One ball, two strike count. Certainly was within the rectangle of Greg Gibson. It was. Runner off first with a 1 2 delivery and then moved away and got him. Wow. So Chris Davis will be thinking about those called strikes. So uh, misses, then comes in, and then and Molina, who's sitting in, but the ball's away. And he'll just move the glove back towards the plate. Pretty late, but he gets the call. Well, if our box means anything, those are strikes. I don't know. I mean, we put that up there and we show you where the ball goes, yeah. and it says yeah. it, if it hits the corner or, or is inside the box, it's uh, supposed to be a strike. Here's Adam Jones. So, Adam coming off a flu day, he was not going to be able to play even if the team had been in action yesterday, came to the ballpark and uh, immediately sent home. The Orioles trying to contain this. Flu that's running through the team, and uh, they're not the only team struggling with it. Very contagious. So the uh, doctors have said to 
players come in and don't feel good, get them out of there. And that's what they did yesterday, sending uh, Adam home and also Meek was sent home. He's back at the ballpark today, but Buck didn't sound as though he would want to use him today out of the bullpen. Yeah, Presley, the hitting instructor, Jim, uh, and uh, Brian Mattis over the weekend went, yeah. went home. At least for, I think, Mattis two days and Jim Presley for one. And then he pitched on Sunday. He said, I don't know how I did it. <laughs> it takes so much out yeah. of you. I mean, it's a really bad strain of the flu. Most of them are, but this one really take not you for a loop and lose weight. Can't eat. One ball, one strike count. Arkeg is still over there at first base, having gotten that leadoff single. Adam Jones will pop it up, and that'll go back. Take a look at our Jeep inside the numbers. Well, there you go, the DHs. You're always, uh, you know, you know if you're in the American League and you're going to play the Red Sox, who were the world champs, you better try to get somebody that can compete with Mr. Ortiz up there. Those numbers will do it. On base percentage. So, the DHs. Great numbers yeah. for the Orioles. This is the first time that Adam has been in the uh, DH role this season. Delman Young and Nelson Cruz have primarily held down the spot. Nick Marquez had one game, and Steve Pierce had one game, and now Adam Jones one game as a DH. And Adam late on a fastball, and he is out of there. So the Orioles gone, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on, one complete, no score. Wagon. We're going to take you to October 15, 1970. After falling to the Miracle Mets in 69, the Orioles back would defeat the Cincinnati Reds 9 3 game five and claim their second world championship title. Mike Cuellar pitched a complete game, and Brooksy was named the MVP of the 1970 World Series. Should have hit the ball to right field. Don't you? <laughs> Brooksy. Don't go big, to that side. mistake. I mean, stay away. You know he's going to be. He's going to catch it. I mean, Everything. what's the problem? <laughs> Here is James Loney. Loney leading it off. He's got a three-game hit streak. One of their hotter hitters, and way up in the air near the fair pole, it is a foul ball. It had the distance. Yeah, done hit a lot of home runs. I mean, really solid year last year. 351 on the road. 13 home runs. Really plus defender hit 299. As we told you, really was struggling coming in here. There's his power zone, so obviously right down the middle. But he's a spray hitter. He hits it. You pitch him away, he's going to hit the ball that way. And that's pretty much what the Orioles did on Monday night. Three for 14 for him off Gonzalez. The 0 1 delivery to him. That'll go the other way. Cruz again coming in. And plenty of time to get there. A couple of pitches. Loading is retired. 
The Orioles proud to join Major League Baseball in honoring Jackie Robinson by having each player and coach wear the number 42. Now you can join in on the honor by bidding on these game worn jerseys at Orioles.com slash auction. Each jersey will be autographed for the player who wore it. Proceeds benefit the Baltimore Orioles Charitable Foundation and the Jackie Robinson Foundation. To own a piece of baseball's history, go to Orioles.com slash auction. Jennings. And he will take the pitch for a ball. Four for 18, and three of the four hits he's had off Gonzalez have been home runs. Now, didn't he uh, lead off a bunch of games last year every time he'd be the leadoff hitter, which is not the case, obviously, today as he's hitting down the lineup. First pitch fastball, he's a really good fastball hitter, and it'd be one nothing Jays. He did make a habit of that yeah. last year. 2 0 count. Infield swung around, playing into Bolt. 2-0 delivery by Gonzalez is there and nubbed off down the first base side and foul right off the end of the bat. For Gonzalez, he is working today on six days rest. He has had uh, ten starts on five days with a 3 3 ERA on five or more days rest. So not uh, bad numbers for the extended rest period for him. Three ball, one strike count. Yeah, it looks like you're going to get the high pitch, but uh, even that ball looked like it was close to being a strike, so you didn't get it. But definitely the ball up in the zone is so maybe a better high ball umpire. And that is there for a strike. Yeah, that's a pretty good slider, late break. Three balls, two strikes on Jennings with one down and nobody on. Infield shifts around the other way now, figuring he might tap one towards right. 3 2 delivery, and we'll follow right straight back. Orioles today, part of Jackie Robinson Day, presented a check for $60,000 to Kendra Gaithier of the Jackie Robinson Foundation to support the foundation scholarship fund over the next four years from the Orioles. That has been a major part of the Robinson Foundation, those scholarships that provide young people with a chance to move on to a college education. 3 2 count. Do it again. Yeah, sitting in the press room with uh, Hank Allen, uh, his brother uh, Richie Dick Allen, uh, you know, one of the premier home run hitters, and Hank played the major leagues. But he was uh, somebody. Uh, Phil Wood at the table said, uh, "Did you ever? Did you see the movie?" He said, "Well, I eventually saw it." He said, "But I lived it." Yeah. So if you were an African American player coming up in the 50s and even early 60s, uh, you had to go through maybe not to what Jackie did because he actually broke the color barrier, but you had to deal with you know with a lot of racial intolerance and hatred and. Mm -hmm. and now Major League Baseball is going to re-emphasize trying to get the inner city programs going because the number of African Americans playing has dropped again. 3 2 delivery on the way and off speed pitch. Somehow he got a piece of that and fouled it off. So Jennings hanging tough here and forcing that pitch count of Gonzalez up to 33 to get uh, four outs. Yeah, he wants to stay away from the fastball, at least in the middle of the plate, and try to get him out with something else, and he keeps fouling it off. This is going to be the 10th pitch of this at bat. 3 2 delivery again, and uh, he's on. He earned that one. So Jennings gets the walk, the first surrendered by Gonzalez with one down. And the Jesus coming up. The Jesus getting the start in left field in the ball game today. All eight of the starts he's made this season have been against the right handers. Platoon player, at least at this point. He's only had a couple of at bats against Gonzalez going 0 for 2. A one down runner on at first base. Flaherty will play even with the bag and over towards short at third. And the pitch will catch the inside corner for strike. Yeah, I ran into Derek Shelton, the, uh, the, the Rays hitting instructor, and he said, yeah, we've, we've scored, what, 14 runs in our last eight games after averaging almost over five in the first six. And he said, I like the process. I don't like the results. And we saw a lot of balls hit hard off way in chin. That just didn't really pay off for him, especially the first inning. Buck Showalter certainly commented on that. 
So I guess his. That's, if you're going to be a hitting instructor and your team is slumping, you you still better be positive. You just come out, you know, you do your work, and you hope things turn around. You don't want players pressing. Yeah. The players don't want it. The coaches certainly don't want it. That will not help the cause. Everybody knows it, but easier said than done. One ball, one strikeout to Jesus last year. 266 off right-handers, a buck 61 off righties, off lefties rather. Yeah, played with three teams, and he's a almost a 280 lifetime hitter. Not a lot of power. I mean, career high, maybe 13, but he fits in here. He's he doesn't run as well as Sam Fold, who's no longer with the Rays, but he's going to look right here to try to hit a ball into right field. And be able to get Jennings, who would really good speed to third base with less than two outs, to try to get a run in. Lamberdozzi, second baseman, over towards the bag. 1 1 delivery and a chopper foul. Again, that off speed pitch used effectively, heading way out in front of it. And the counts at 1 and 2. These two teams will have a makeup game somewhere along the way. Still no decision, at least not announced on the date. Uh, but Show Walter was talking about it this morning. It's complicated because there are rules about how many days teams play in a row, and that usually affects an off day. And so you got to find one where either it doesn't violate the rule. Runner goes, put up in the air. Marcakis over. Runner all the way down to second will come back. The Hastings retired. So no announcement. They didn't want to play a doubleheader today. I don't think either team really wanted to do that. You've got. Tampa Bay is going home to play the Yankees. They're depleted rotation still being put in order. Buck Showalter didn't want to do it because he wasn't sure how healthy his people were going to be. Whether he'd have Adam Jones back, whether Meek would be ready to pitch again, whether somebody else would come down with the flu overnight. So neither team was real anxious to do a doubleheader today. And even last night, uh, Brandon Gomes was the announced starter because they didn't want to start Oda Rizzi and then maybe have a two inning game because it did rain late into the evening. And Odorizzi had the flu. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't feeling very well. He's out there today, and one would have to believe if he really had any flu symptoms yesterday, it's going to be tough to go too far in this ball game. But we shall see. Here's Janelle Escobar. Escobar with the 0 for 3 in the opener. Runner at first, two down now. Jennings drew the walk. He's at first base. And a pitch away that he goes after. And a one strike count. Escobar with a four for 14 lifetime off the Orioles starter. Molina, number nine hitter, be waiting on deck. Orioles come in with a 6 7 record, a game and a half out. Tampa Bay 500, their game out. Toronto right now is in first, half game ahead of the Yankees. Foul back. We were kind of joking with all the injuries that have taken place for teams all around baseball, but including the East. Maybe nobody wins the American League East. Everybody plays 500. <laughs> well, even last night, uh, I mean, he, Napoli, he dislocates his finger. They snap it back in. He's out of the game. And then Bogart throws a low low throw. 1-1 one, one ball game. White Sox win 2-1. to one. And, You know, Carp has to play first base. Uh, you know. Yep. 34 degrees in yeah. Chicago when they were playing that ball game. Last night, Red Sox and the White Sox. That ball will miss down low and a one ball, two strike count. Yeah, I was watching the uh, highlights. The run the Red Sox got, Daniel Nava had a home run and he either had, he was either robbing a bank or he had a ski mask on. I mean, he was complete. I've never seen anybody. <laughs> it was cold. A cold night in Chicago and we've had those. I thought the worst game I've ever seen played in weather conditions was the one that was played in Chicago. The Orioles played in, I think, three years ago, maybe four, where literally it was hailing, snowing, raining. There was ice on the field. Twelve. Twelve innings. We, we Twelve innings. You and I, and you yes. wanted to have the windows open because yes. you're from Maine. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I was wrong once in a while. Our turtles froze. <laughs> <laughs> turtles froze. Well, those you are the, explain that. Those are the chocolate uh, <laughs> car caramel uh, things that Ed Farmer, uh, their radio guy, former major league pitcher, sends over. Caramel turtles. Well, your Luke Scott, I remember uh, he said it was like needles in his face. He was playing left field, and the wind was blowing so hard from right to left, and it was just blowing into the side of his face. And then there were puddles that were actually kind of icing up. Yes. Yeah. To this day, I can't believe that game was played. One ball, two strike count. Runner takes off at first and a late swing. Tried to double clutch on that. It gets fouled back by Escobar. They'll stay at one and two. 
Well, Miguel around the strike zone, but just can't quite getting uh, get him into put it into play early, or at least as early as he would like. And then, of course, if you're the Rays, this is exactly what they want. Really working him with these foul balls. Yeah, they want to get as many runs as they can. I mean, that would be an obvious observation, but they also want to get the pitch count up. One ball, two strikes with two down. Again, runner not going, and the ball looped in the air towards center. Lowe's got plenty of time and will put it away. No runs with a base runner left on as we head out here. World Series game one with our own Jim Palmer. Eight and a third innings, getting a win 4 3, October 10, 1970. The game aired on Masson today on Orioles Classics. And he was a little more limber than that stature. <laughs>more you've won 500 for being selected you'll win 500 for every Orioles home run hit today play the Orioles scratch off for the Maryland lottery for your chance to be a contestant and win a trip to see the O's play at Wrigley or maybe a World Series game learn more at mdlottery.com slash Orioles good luck Dorothy it did have to bring out the uh, blankets the hats the gloves the Winter coach today. It is that cool at 44 degrees when we started, and the significant wind taking the chill down. You want to be in the sun. Uh, you do. I would venture that would be a good guess from up here. We're so, not. We're not. That's all right. And it's cool, but and the uh, wind is blowing in a little bit here. It is one of those, and it's supposed to be a little bit cool as the Orioles head off to Boston. Yeah, the uh, day off tomorrow, then they'll be up there for the marathon weekend, Patriots Day. How about that? 17 pitches, all fastballs. What a crazy, interesting. Uh, I was looking at the numbers on him. As a last year, he was a fly ball pitcher, about 52 percent of the 54 uh, percent of the outs coming on fly balls this year. In the early starts, he's had first two games, 69 percent of the outs have been on the ground. Well, they gave Change up seven, yeah, seven runs in that last game, but he gave up six of the ten hits all in the fifth inning. So he was pitching fairly well until he got later into the game. And then uh, in that fifth, uh, Alex Gordon also hit a home run, so he ran into some trouble. Here is Matt Wieters. And Wieters will take the pitch. Matt just uh, loves playing against Tampa Bay. Leads the majors, batting average against them at 340. That's career. 53 RBIs, second only to Robinson Cano and Adam Lynn tied. One ahead of him. 15 home runs, the most by any opponent against the Rays. So he has really had success against this Tampa Bay pitching staff, and that's saying a lot. It really is because they can really pitch. The key, every time we go to Tampa, they keep talking about that home run. He hit right handed to right center field about four, maybe 35. He's just scorched it. And Odorizzi taking a little too long, so Weeder's out. Matt this season with the numbers dramatically improved with the 273 right handed and hitting 400. Left handed, including a couple of home runs. Pitch will be down low, and it's full three and two.
Yeah, Jake uh, Rizzi, he was a first round uh, draft choice, but it, it, it wasn't by Kansas City. I mean, it was actually by Milwaukee. And, and I mean, he's been involved with two pretty good trades with two pretty good pitchers. James Shields to get from Kansas City to Tampa Bay and then Grinky. Leaders will put that one up in the air. Not happy with the at bat. It'll be center and Jennings who will put it away. Weeders is retired. So one down here in the second inning. JJ Hardy. JJ had a big ball game on Monday night in that opener. He ended up with the two doubles, a single, two runs scored, and an RBI. Part of the three for four ball game that he had. Already starting to pick up now in the at bats, getting back into the lineup regularly. This is the eighth game he's played in this season. Picked up a couple of doubles as an RBI. And that 286 average. 1 0 delivery to him, take it in the air to right field, back on the warning track. And Myers makes the catch, and there are two down. Win a meet and greet with Adam Jones presented by American Standard. Just text Masson's word of the day, WALL, W-A-L-L, to 29292 for your chance to win. That's WALL, 29292. Find your American Standard dealer at midatlanticcomfort.com. Adam, the DH, on the bench. Two down, nobody on. Here's Lowe gets the start in center field. And comes in with the... Yeah. Tenth game that he's appeared in, couple of RBIs. So oh, and two. Yeah, so now you saw 17 fastballs in the first inning, and then all of a sudden, uh, Jose Molina and uh, Jake Odorizzi are going to use all the pitches. We've seen curveballs. We've seen that uh, thing they describe as the thing, which is the changeup <laughs> that Alex Cobb taught him. Mike Potter used to have the Fosh ball. Nobody ever really knew what it was, but it was kind of a changeup. Didn't want to tell anybody how to throw it. Probably wouldn't have helped anyway because no. you probably well, couldn't yeah. throw it. <laughs> well, I mean, I still, anytime you ever, a lot of times, you just, certain guys can make the ball move a certain way. I mean, Mariana Rivera, what did Mel Stoudermeyer said? Hey, don't, hey, don't throw that cutter. Using stop that. using that cutter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's the 0-2 delivery outside. One ball, two strike count. Yeah, how are you going to throw strikes with that pitch? A lot of pitchers. Uh, I'm sure, Jim, just you don't know really why. I mean, and you can't teach it. You, you can just hold the ball a certain way, and it does something that it doesn't do for others. 1-2 pitch, and whoa. The entire Tampa Bay team was headed off yeah. the field. Well, it was a strike earlier. I think we've seen a little inconsistency from Mr. Gibson today. The ball might have been a little low, but might have gotten the bottom of the rectangle. 2 2 delivery on the way, and that will miss. So that'll take it to three balls and two strikes on low. And two down and nobody on. Noter easy with 31 pitches thrown. And the ball put up in the air, second base. Zobras. And he's got it. So a one, two, three inning, and we've completed two. Oriole Park at Camden Yards, no score.
to you by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. And by Chapin Davis. Chapin Davis providing investments that can produce income from your retirement plan. Call to learn more, 800-222-3246 or at chapindavis.com. Gary Tharge and Palmer with you here in the day game. As the Orioles and the Rays conclude a quick two game series because of the washout yesterday. Here's Molina. And he'll take it for a strike. The catcher batting ninth. Had some success off Gonzalez with the four for 12 and a home run. Yeah, it doesn't usually hit a whole lot of home runs. Two last year. Played in 99 games. And against the starter, Molina's the backup for Tampa Bay starting this season. Yeah, so I would, I think you could, it's safe to say they've upgraded their catching because they get a younger guy that comes out of the National League with a great track record, uh, you know, contact hitter, one of the better ERAs catching wise. And in Molina, they get a uh, catcher who has a 34% effective rate. Throwing out base dealers, that's fourth best among active catchers. He's 38 years old now, 15 years in the majors. Yeah, he's going to be 39 in June. And Young man. And he can steal bases, too. One, two, delivery on the way to him, and that'll be fouled off. You know, I was telling him about uh, the owner, uh, Navarro, uh, stealing a base the other day. And I said, you need to catch uh, Jose. He was uh, two out of three last year. And he said, actually, Jose said I was three out of four the year before. <laughs> so he's got a little work to do. I don't know if Mr. Navarro knows that, but he will. <laughs> we'll remind him when we get up That's to Toronto. Right. One ball, two strike count on Molina. Zobrist and Myers, top of the order, do up here for Tampa Bay. And then his brother, I guess, is a first base coach and catching instructor now with the Rangers, Benji, and his other brother's perennial all star, mm -hmm. one of the best catchers in baseball. If out of here, Molina with a mm. with hits him with the Cardinals, and uh, there's the curveball. I like this windup a little bit better. Just you know, you got to make adjustments. He's closed, and this is a pitch two years ago when he went nine and four that he was able to you know to throw it a lot, just incorporate it, make the guys in the uh, in the opposing uniforms know that you have an extra pitch, and he's. So remember what Elliot Johnson used to play for the Rays used to say he said best curveball in the Mexican League which is where they got Miguel from. Ben Zobras popped out his first time up Zobrist takes it inside for a ball. Zobrist has been about the only Ray doing anything at the plate on the road. He's hitting 308 coming into the game in road games. The rest of the team has a combined 170 road batting average. Worked outside and will miss with that one. And the count goes to 2 0 on Zobris. During his three game hit streak, four hits in 11 at bat starting the day. Two zero delivery. Zobris will take it outside. 3 0. It's just amazing how often he can work himself into hitters' counts. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's not swinging here. I mean, Joe Madden may give him the green light, fastball in the middle of the plate. You know, you can never assume it. Taking and four straight. So there is the second walk surrendered by Gonzalez in the game. Take a look at our Jeep inside the numbers. Lowest ground ball percentage we talked about for these pitchers. With Gonzalez and Tillman, two of the Orioles on it. Yeah, Chris won 16 games last year and has really pitched well this year. Fly ball pitchers in a home run park. Don't pitch all the time here, but you know, at least through the first, at least over the homestand over the weekend, the infield was very fast. I'm not sure if that might have changed a little bit with the tarp being on and ice and the ice. <laughs> Make it real slick. Oh, one the count on Myers. Myers a strikeout victim. His first time up. Yeah, on days like this, I mean, it's, you're probably about as warm as anybody because you're moving around if you're pitching. But the ball can be a little bit slick. Myers inside out pop up right field. Marquez coming in. Runner playing it halfway. Myers is retired. Two down. 
Get ready to celebrate the first fireworks night. Birds coming home Friday, April 25, three games against the Royals. On Friday, there'll be the first fireworks lighting up the downtown skies. For tickets, Orioles.com or 888-848-BIRD. Two down, here's Joyce, who delivered a double his first time to the plate. Joyce now with three doubles on the season. Runner at first base. Zobras, infield shift on. And that'll be foul back. Trying to line one up right there. Well, he got off to a great start. I mean, last year he had 14 of his 18 home runs in the first 60 games, and then in the next 80 he only hit four. A really good fastball hitter inside part of the plate fastball hitter. Obviously if you hang a breaking ball and you speed up the bat. But he can hit some home runs. He's a pull hitter. A one delivery to him and Joyce in the dirt leaders with a nice stop and looks Zobris back to the bag at first. Yeah, the race probably the, one of the lowest totals last year and it was about 73 stolen bases four out of five this year. Zobris has one of them. Here's the 0 1. And a swing and a miss on a good off speed delivery. No, oh, there's the splitter. That's the strikeout ground ball pitch. And the bottom just drops out. Now, the one that Beltran hit up in New York kind of rolled. What's this ball just really good late life? It's on top of it. A refined wind up has a lot to do with that. One, two count. Zobras not moving yet at first base and not going here. And the pitch will be taken up high. So a lot of pitches being thrown. Gonzalez is effective here. I mean, the Rays only have one hit with 0 0, but up to 60 pitches thrown and not through the third inning yet. Two balls, two strikes. And another one foul back. Yeah, when you struggle a little bit, the pitch count goes up. I mean, so you can explain the uh, the first two games in the Yankee Stadium. He got a little bit better as the game progressed after giving up the early home runs. But 16 pitches his first year, that was two years ago. Last year, it actually went to down a little bit, 15.8. And this year, coming in, 17.5 per inning. And he's a little bit higher than that today. 2 2 delivery on the way, and uh, that's going to miss. Well, this is really what Derek Sheldon, the, the hitting instructor of the Rays, was saying. We're not scoring a lot of runs, but we, the, the process of going up and not chasing pitches has been pretty constant. It's just not much to show for it. And you don't want to change that. No. And the figure, I mean, those, those are amazingly high pitch numbers yep. for a guy that hasn't given up a run and not getting whacked around. Davis behind the runner at first base. 3 2 runner goes. And a swing and a miss. Gonzalez comes back to get him. Three K's for Gonzalez. Two in that inning. We go to the bottom of the third inning. Lombardozzi will kick it off.
Jackie Robinson, who said, I'm not concerned with your liking or disliking me. All I ask is that you respect me as a human being. A thought much repeated after Jackie Robinson talked about that as he came into Major League Baseball. And the future Hall of Famer recognized officially yesterday with the breaking of the color barrier game. And uh, because the Orioles race rained out here, they're wearing the number 42 for today's game. No score in this one. Lombardozzi, Flaherty, and Marquecas going to the plate for the Orioles. Lombardozzi at second. He had a two for four in the game on Monday. That yeah, drove in a run. Has played well. Odorizzi's had no walks, two strikeouts. That's pretty right where you want to be, about 16 pitches per inning, maybe a little bit less. And again, after the an inning of all fastballs, using them all the pitches, and there's a change up just to start them off. I don't think that Jose Molina and Jake Ozarizzi don't know that Steve Lombard Dozy is a pretty good fastball hitter. So if you get it some other way, and there's another one, get him out, you're probably going to try to do it. And then as we constantly talk about pretty much pretty important to get the leadoff hitter out not only in a nothing nothing game but every inning that one will miss up five and the count will go to two balls and one strike. But easy through the first two ball games had some problems with leadoff hitters getting only 64 percent of them out a little bit low foul back and a two ball two strike count. On Lambert Ozzie. He right. hasn't thrown a pitch over 90 and nobody's been able to actually get to it yet. The Rays rotation. Not quite sure exactly what it's going to be. Bedard's going to be in it at least for the moment. Ramos is going to be in it. At least for the moment. They've got a couple of people. One veteran one uh, youngster at the minor league level that they're taking a look at. But uh, right now. Just not sure how this is going to shake down. They're going to go through it. At least one time the way it's currently set up with three starters out of there and see what it looks like. Eric Bedard former Oriole in it at the moment and a strike taken at the knees. Armadozzi's the third strikeout victim Broder easy. All those pitches and then uh, about as good as you can throw it. Look where the glove is. You just want to encourage Greg Gibson to call it. And Molina slides out there and then he hits the glove pretty much right in the middle of it. Ryan Flaherty batting ninth playing third two for four with a couple of RBIs in the opener. And starting to pick his average up including a couple of the doubles that he's picked up on the year. A little unusual shift they actually need the third baseman in case he's going to bunt. Right at third base and everybody else. I mean, hit it there if you can. 1 0 delivery pitched away and a 2 0 count with Mark Akis waiting on deck. We have entered the game of shifts, no question about it. Almost every hitter now there is a significant shift, not just a couple of steps. 2 0 delivery fouled off the other way. It is nothing new in baseball. I think we mentioned last year when we were talking about it. Public radio did a series on uh, old radio shows that had baseball men speaking, and uh, manager McGraw back in the 30s was talking about moving his infield around and based on where players hit. It's just now it's become so formalized. Yeah, I don't think it's, it's, it was as dramatic, but I remember the first time in Yankee Stadium, and you know, I had grown up going there when I was a kid. Pitching against Mickey Mantle, and he had a ball right through my legs. I mean, he hit it pretty hard. And I, I, I think I gave it an O oh, shucks, ah oh, shucks. And Louis Aparicio is playing right behind him, catches it, throws Mickey out. Well, so makes, he shifted, but he didn't. Yeah. You know, they didn't have everybody over there. It only makes sense. I mean, if you're watching a guy and he's always hitting the ball between first and second base, maybe you want to put somebody there. Marquez will foul it back. Nick had a single his first time up. The only Orioles hit. Of course, when he hit the one hit he got off me, which was a home run, into the third deck, I couldn't actually play anybody. No, you couldn't. Him. No, no. Would have liked to. That's an shucks too. <laughs> it's a little more than that. <laughs> <laughs> and the 0-1, great off-speed pitch. That one just dropped in there. It's 70 miles an hour. That may be the slowest off-pitch he's slown in the thrown in the ball game. 
to strike out. Arcagas waiting on it. He'll go after it to left field. De Jesus moving in. Getting the angle with the sun puts it away nine in a row retired by Odorizzi setting the side down here in the third three complete here at Camden Yards. Sarasota on Florida's Gulf Coast. Go beyond the stadium to the top rated beaches in the USA. You can make your plans. Just go to visit Sarasota.org. Actually, it wouldn't be a bad day to be in Sarasota. Sunny and 70 degrees at the really? moment. 70. 70. Cold front degrees. The uh, Tampa Bay team heading back home. We we're joking with some of their announcers about that. Too bad you got to go back where it's going to be 75. <laughs> And Longoria will foul the pitch off. Evan Longoria paid a tremendous compliment to Gonzalez last week. He rated, Longoria did, rated Gonzalez as the most underrated pitcher in the American League. Now, Evan Longoria's had a 5 for 16 with a homer against him. So it's not as though he was 0 for 28 or something against him. But that was a, that's a pretty big compliment from a guy who knows a little bit about hitting. And he has to face him. Grounded out his first time up. One ball, one strike count, shift on in the infield. And the pitch is there for a strike. I thought two years ago when he went nine and four, he was as good as, as anybody. And of course, the same time Chris Tillman came up with nine and three the second half, the Orioles won 93 games in 2012. Well, he went back a little bit last year. Mm. There's a good splitter. I think he swung through it. Yeah. That's four strikeouts for a Gonzalez, two in a row. So, Miguel says thank you very much, Evan, for the compliment and try to hit this splitter. Yeah. <laughs> and it was a good one. It. <laughs> I mean, I just looked at his windup and and they worked hard at it. He wasn't getting close. He was over on maybe on the you know extreme side of the rubber. You know, moving the. To the left, he's way over first base. On the right, he's way over the third base. And we talked about how hey, about in the middle, so you can go either way. That's where Jimenez uh, has done it in the past. So I just looks to me, he's getting closed. His stuff is sharper. And two years ago, I thought he was as good as anybody in our starting staff. Absolutely, because he's got four pitches and uh, the split fingered fastball, and which is what Longoria swung over. It's a plus plus pitch. One zero delivery on the way, and that one hurt. It hurts anyway on cold day it hurts more. Loney flied out to left field his first time up as he nubbed that one somewhere off the ankle leg foot. It's <laughs> James Brown would say. <laughs> and then so one and one. <laughs> Not followed up, however, with the next line of I feel good. 
Here's the one one delivery by Gonzalez and that will be taken down low for a ball. Well George Henry uh, down at first base the, uh, he's, he's not going to get anyone. He's, he's about as deep as you can. <laughs> if he's any deeper he'd be hiding behind the, the tarp. Stay in the coach's box please. <laughs> well you know well, I can't to. see it from here. <laughs> and it's taken outside. So a three ball one strike count Gonzalez working from behind hitters here continuing to. Go deep into counts, but still getting the outs as the only hit a Joyce double came in the first inning. Each team picked up their lone hit in the first. Three left on by the Rays, one by the Orioles so far. 3 1 pitch, and he walked it. There's walk number three. And again, it comes with one away. Not too late to upgrade your summer with an Orioles special season plan. Exclusive orange carpet benefits. You save money over the cost of single game tickets, lots of insider access, VIP extras, and more available for as few as 11 with pricing to fit any budget. For details, Orioles.com slash season. Schools out around the Baltimore area for the week break. And a lot of youngsters on hand here at the ballpark for the day game. Looking butts and taken for a strike by Jennings, who drew a walk his first time up. Well, with three lifetime home runs, I'm sure the Miguel would like that. But see if he meant it. Flaherty will play even with the bag at third. Well, that's what it does early in the count. It does bring the third baseman in. It enhances your chance of hitting it by him. Oh, one count, one away. Loney at first, very short lead. And uh, Bunting and fouls it back over the screen. Talk about number of games being played today. The Yankees are playing. They've got Kelly Johnson at first base today. Their catcher, first baseman, Cervelli, of course, 60 day DL now with a great two hamstrings. So they're trying to figure out what to do with their lineup. Koji O'Hara is back with the Red Sox. He's supposed to be ready to go tomorrow. Uh, he is going to work in the bullpen today to see if that shoulder feels all right. 0 2 delivery is outside, and uh, Jose Reyes with the Blue Jays. That hamstring problem, he's now getting some rehab games in, and he's supposed to return to the Toronto lineup on Friday. So at least some players going the other way. Yeah. Pedroia got a quarter zone shot, hopes to play over the weekend. He played last night. One ball, two strike delivery. And that's going to bounce all the way to the backstop. Leaders coming back to get it. Wild pitch. Loney goes down to second base. The runner in scoring position with one away here in the fourth inning. Yeah, low run game. You don't want to walk anybody, and then you don't want to do this. I mean, he got it out there well in front of home plate, 60 feet, six inches. Couldn't quite get it all the way, and then ricochets off some part of Matt Beater's anatomy or equipment. So Jennings gets an RBI opportunity. Only the second base runner in the game has reached second base. Both have been for the Rays. Two ball, two strike count. And that'll go towards the hole. Hardy, no play. It's an infield hit. It will hold the runner, though, at second base. A yeah, low curve ball that, that not a bad pitch might have been a little bit in the middle of the plate so that that way he gets to it a little bit quicker and then he hits it hard but real nice play Loney's not going to score anyway but he might have gone third with the play in front of him even though there was nobody at third base of course you don't know that and Flaherty is stretched on the ground and Stamba Bay team hitting just 205 with runners in scoring position. They get their second chance here. Longoria had the other in the first inning and he grounded out. Now De Jesus gets an opportunity. Fly it out. Right field. He's 0 for 6 so far with runners in scoring position. And again, Weed is down to block it. And a 1 0 count. Seventy nine pitches here in the fourth inning. Well, the wind up, and we talked about the trying to re work on it, refine it. What happens is if you watch his front shoulder, it was very quick on that pitch. So, kind of like a golf swing, can you rule a hold up on the last day of a golf tournament? 
1 0 delivery, runners on first and second. That is there for a strike to the aces. So you have nobody on the base that's going to, you know, Loney's not going to steal third, so it's going to be a little more deliberate. It's not like you had Jennings at first and you knew he was going to run a little, or at least had the capabilities of it. So you can still be slow it down just enough to get closed and gives you a better direction to where you want to throw the ball. And the 1 1 delivery on the way, and that will be a strike on the outside corner. So he'll work ahead of DeJesus here, one and two. Big late breaking curveball. That's probably outside, but he'll take it. Yes. <laughs> and it really does, it, it changes the bat because if you're David uh, DeJesus, strike zone just got bigger. And with two strikes, last thing you want to do is get called out. Here's the one two delivery to him, and he'll loop one to right field. Marquez is coming, diving, and caught it. This will be a double play at second base. Loney was all the way around third. Well, they're going to come out. He's going to come out, yeah. so we'll stay right here. The catch made by Marquez, the umpire at first base, Bill Miller, was out there. Now Madden's got to decide whether he wants to challenge this or not. Yeah, Nick makes a marvelous play. Sinking line drive. And they're going to look at it. So I think he got it. Big love. Certainly, if you get the call, I'm not sure there's enough there to overturn it. But I can certainly understand because it's a crucial time of the game. He looking into the dugout. Madden did. He got the thumbs down from his video replay person saying no, the catch was made. So there'll be no challenge and a fine play to end the inning. So no runs, one hit, no errors, only one left. A double play and Gonzalez out of the den. The Greg Gibson, the home plate umpire between innings. Everybody trying to get it right. The Orioles, when the catch was made, immediately came off the field. Well, they're not supposed to. So the home plate umpire, Greg Gibson, was waving the Orioles back out onto the field because they're supposed to wait until a decision's made on whether or not there's a challenge. And all of that has to do with trying to keep the pace of the game going so you don't pull the guys off. Challenge is found to be right. You got to put them back out on the field. So it's all part of the stuff that goes on. Runners at first and second, and Marquez makes the catch. Or at least that's what first yep. base umpire thought. What happens if they reverse it? Does Loney only go to third? Well, that's up to the umpires. That's their discretionary call as to where the one runner would have been, and uh, that is not. So he may have scored. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would be the argument. See, that's where you could go back and have a real argument again. Everybody's talking about how. Managers and coaches and fans are missing the good old arguments of going out manager umpire. You could have one there. In any event, bottom half of the fourth inning. The Rays 0 2 0, the Orioles 0 1 0. And leading it off is Cruz, then Davis and Jones to follow. 2 0 delivery, and Cruz will pop it up outside of first, heading to the seats and out of play. 
Well, they are having trouble talking about the Oriole hitters against Jake Oker. Odorizzi, other than the, uh, the leadoff batter, and he's retired nine in a row, 90. He mixed his pitches up after the first inning, 17 straight fastballs to get out of the first. But you look at his windup, it's very simple. It's a good one, and he must hide the ball well. And he will miss with that one. Three ball, one strike count. He has walked none, struck out three. The Cruz popped out his first time up. Here's the 3 1 delivery and Cruz down to third and foul. And Bobby Dickerson out of harm's way. Talking about the new replay system, Major League Baseball will release information on the uh, numbers on the replay system. And after the first two weeks, there were 21 overturned calls out of 64 challenges. That's about one every 6.7 games where calls overturned. 3 2 delivery on the way, and again, it's going to be foul back. Three ball, two strike count stays. So, leadoff hitter, nothing, nothing game, second time through the order, right into the heart of the lineup. And again, and he trusts his stuff. So, that's 90. Maybe some uh, movement that. You can't see it. I read a report where somebody, one of the scouts, said, "Well, he was trying to be too fine in spring training. Well, gave up what, a little bit over four runs a game, but today, pretty aggressive with his stuff. Trust it. Three-two delivery on the way, and uh, did he go? No. So there is the first walk. He has issued, and it is a leadoff walk to Cruz in the inning. Our PNC Minor League report is brought to you by PNC Bank for the Achiever in you. Mike Wright, the right-hander, gaining some recognition at Norfolk against the Atlanta Braves Gwinnett team. A couple of runs, earned runs yeah. in the ball game. Well, they like him, and you know, always gets a chance in spring training. He's still relatively young, sinker baller, big power curveball. Here is Chris Davis. Davis going to get a base hit into right field. Cruz will make a turn and stay. Myers up. And the Orioles get something going here in the fourth inning. The two on and nobody else. So the first time they just threw him high fastballs, ended up striking him out. This time, Odorizzi tries to get ahead. The ball's not up. It's down. Now you get into the power zone. And it's not a bad pitch outside third of the plate. He just hooks it. And you're this strong. And they threw the ball not by you. I mean, he just threw him in and struck him out away. Probably looking fastball, and he's able to get it in the right field past the second baseman. So let's see if the Orioles can take advantage of it. Their second hit of the ball game, the walk to Cruz, ended the nine in a row retired by Odorizzi. And now Adam Jones will get the RBI chance. A strikeout victim. His first time up, Adam one for 11 with runners in scoring position. And they get, and I'm not suggesting he bunts because he hit 33 home runs last year, but they give him the bunt because they don't think he's going to lay one down. And he does. Yeah. And hard. Play's going to be at first. No, an infield hit with Longoria way back. He had no play. You know, you look around and maybe you don't feel well because you had to go home yesterday and didn't have a good at bat. They give you the bunt and you take it. That is baseball. That is Jockey Robinson right there. That's what he would have done. That's what good heady players. You want to play out on the grass, which is where Longoria, who's a terrific third baseman, is playing. And you just can't give the lip service, well, it's a good time to bunt because they're playing back. You got to be actually able to do it, and he is. Not a great bunt, but you can see. He bunts it hard, but Longoria is so far back, it's still a base hit. Loads him up. Adams, when working uh, extra time on that in batting practice, getting those bunts down the third base side. And now, and the other thing is, of course, you've got Matt Wieters, who's hot and has had big numbers against Tampa Bay behind you, so why not load him up? Yeah, and, and the whole intent of that was to bunt for a base hit. And he wasn't giving himself mm. up. Not that they're going to walk Wieters in a nothing nothing game to load him up. With Hardy, who got three hits the other night, but that was a I'll get him over, but I will also get myself to first base. Base is loaded, nobody out. Matt Wieters. Wieters flying out to center his first time up. 
Leaders has had one shot so far with the bases loaded this year 0 for 1. The team has gone 1 for 3 with the bases loaded that being a double. That was picked up by Steve Clevenger. 0 1 delivery. Leaders will file it back and order easy coming right at him and an 0 2 count. Well, there's Matt at the top of the pile in the American League as a catcher with that 366 number. Tyler Flowers is number two. Perez, Pierzynski, and Jan Gomes. Yeah, Gomes, they, they signed him long term in, in Cleveland. And we know AJ will see him this weekend. 0 2 delivery outside. Matt coming into the ballgame is third in the American League in batting average, and he is fourth. In slugging in the American League. Now we got that note today. He leads him in uh, what hits, runs scored, home runs, RBIs, or at least tied. And the only other player is Nap Mike Napoli of the Red Sox that does that. One, two delivery sacks full. See, it'll stay at one and two. Well, if you're Jim Hickey and uh, you're the pitching coach for the Rays, even though Odorizzi is in trouble, he does. He does command his stuff pretty well because he's coming right at him. Orioles had a big game with runners in scoring position in that seven to one win on Monday. They went six for 13 to move into the number one spot in the league with a 288 batting average. They got a shot here, one two delivery. Weeders will take it up high, two and two. And the good news for Matt is that ideally he'd love to get a base hit, but he can hit a fly ball. He can get a run in a lot of different ways. And you know what Jake Odorizzi wants to do. He get the 2 2. He wants to strike him out if he can. They give Matt the right field corner. The outfield swung around towards left, which is where he does put a lot of fly balls and base hits. 2 2 delivery to him and a ground ball foul broken back. Well, perfectly located fastball. Yeah, this kid has a pretty good idea. Wherever Molina goes, the ball, with a couple of exceptions, that is going to end up there with the fastball. Peters with some new lumber. Now Odorizzi is the one who's having that pitch count built up here. In this fourth inning, still nobody out. Walk to Cruz, single to Davis, single by Jones on the bunt base hit. 2 2 delivery to Weeters, and Matt puts it in the air. Center field. Jennings backing up. Jennings at the wall and makes the catch. Tagging up Cruz. He will score. The other two runners will advance. RBI Weeters, and he just missed the grand slam. Well, the win kept him from hitting the home run. I mean, that ball was crushed. He hit it to dead center. We talked about different ways to get him in. This is one of them. So he just nails this ball. And Jennings makes a very nice play going back. And the wind knocks it down. And meanwhile, well, the Orioles get their run and heads up base running as everybody moves up. Matt with nine RBIs now to take over the lead on the Orioles team alone. Chris Davis with eight. Here's Hardy. Runners at second and third. Hardy flied out. His first time up. The ball hits so deep, both runners, Davis and Jones, able to advance easily. And the pitch is there for a strike. So the O's take the 1 0 lead here in the fourth inning. And the base hit here could score a couple more. And they play back uh, with the exception of third because uh, they'd rather give up one than two. So a ground ball to the middle of the diamond, other than the pitcher. And there's going to score another run. 0 1 delivery. And that will miss outside to the Orioles shortstop. One ball, one strike. Orioles with a chance for a big inning against Notre Easy. Hardy last year hit a 256 average here at home. He had 11 home runs. A little better on the road. Where he hit 269, had 14 homers, but all in all, not a lot of difference there. 1 1 pitch to him. That's a tapper. Odorizzi's got a runner coming home. He'll go to first and he'll just get the out. But Loney going over. Little underhand flip as he had trouble picking it up. Orioles get another run. Davis scores 2 to nothing. Yeah, pretty athletic uh, play. I think obviously you go to get this ball. You're thinking, I'm going to maybe have a place at home. And then once you can't handle it, 
And a little uh, almost like he's a second baseman. So he's going to knock it down. Tries to pick it up. Doesn't pick it up. Meanwhile he's sliding all over. And then almost like a shovel from the second baseman at the shortstop. To complete the double play. Now a runner at third base as Adam Jones moves up. RBI picked up by Hardy on that one. That's his second. And two away, and here's David Lowe. Popped out his first time up. And in the dirt, Molina. Jones not far off the bag is third on the look by Molina. So this is where speed really dictates how they play David Lowe. Loney in at first. Longoria in at third. Even your infielders, any kind of high chopper, even even though the uh, the second baseman Zobris is playing on the grass, that's unusual. 1-0 delivery on the way, and that'll be fouled off. The idea of a suicide squeeze for a base hit. We've seen it once already this year, and not in this situation you wouldn't expect, but because of that speed, they did have them in at the corners. Now they'll back up. As Longoria moves back a couple of steps, one ball, one strike out. In honor of Jackie Robinson, I think Adam ought to steal home. What do you think? <laughs> well, I'm a left-handed batter up though. Well, I, you, by. I know it may sound so silly, but the fact is, you have an option if you're Jake uh, Odorizzi. He can either wind up, which he's not. He's taking a stretch, and that makes sense to me mm -hmm. because why do I want to wind up and look at a guy getting a huge lead, which was exactly what Jackie Robinson would have done, or Adam Jones would have done today. Do one delivery. It also gives the runner a chance to really jockey with the pitcher because in the windup he's going back and You're forth right. and running up and down the line and out of the corner of your eye. I got to believe that's a little disruptive. I did it on a Monday night and uh, Campanaris, who, you know, Bert Campanaris, terrific. I think he stole 100 bases once, 72 and whatever. And I just stepped off. They called the balk. It didn't balk, but I couldn't argue it. So that's the last time I did not take a stretch. It just made sense. If a guy can run, why do you want him? I can stand there before I go into my stretch. I can look at him. I can step off. I can actually fake a throw to the third. But the minute you go into your lineup, everything changes. So this is a young pitcher doing the right thing here. Now, whether he'll get David Lowe out, it's a whole other thing. 3 2 count, two down, and Lowe fouls it back hard. And the count will stay at three and two. Two runs in for the Orioles. The leadoff walk. Ty Cruz has crossed the plate. RBIs have gone to Weeders and Hardy. And a two nothing lead in the fourth inning. What was that again? The leadoff walk. Leadoff. Lead leadoff walk. His only walk. Yum yum for the offense. A leadoff walk. Odorizzi three two again. No takes and he's gone. Four strikeouts picked up by Odorizzi, but the Orioles get a couple of runs, two hits, no errors, one left on base, and the O's up two nothing. For a beautiful new carpet, hardwood, and laminate, call 
877-241 Luna. Gary Thorne and Jim Palmer, an abbreviated two games against the Rays with the washout yesterday, and the Orioles have the 2-0 lead. As we go to the fifth inning, Gonzalez three walks, three strikeouts on the mound for the Orioles. Escobar, Molina, and Zobrist. And a ball put up in the air to left field. Wind blowing a bit that way, but it's going to hold up. And Cruz will put it away, and Escobar is retired. Hey, it's time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag Mass and Orioles for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. One down on one pitch. Molina strikeout victim coming up. Well, you know, Miguel Gonzalez is thinking, I, I got to go out there and have an easy inning. I think he got a little fortunate. That ball was hit very, very hard. I, does appear the wind knocking the ball down. Yeah. Because I think Weeder's balls was he hit it well enough to get it out of here. And it almost did, but this time around the Rays hitters coming up going after that first pitch being delivered by Gonzalez. Tampa Bay has not had a leadoff man on. Good news for Gonzalez. First two, he was retiring only 40% of the leadoff batters. First two games. Pitches away and probably up high. One ball, one strike count. Want to send along our best wishes to Don Zimmer. Still with the Tampa Bay organization, 66 years in Major League Baseball, played with Jackie Robinson. Zim is uh, back home in the Tampa Bay area. He's got to go undergo some surgery for a, a heart valve. And uh, certainly our uh, thoughts and prayers are with Zim. Two ball, one strike out. And taken on the outside corner. Two and two on Molina, number nine hitter. Zobrest waiting on deck. Gonzalez picking the pace up, getting the ball back and ready to go. Two twos foul back into the screen. And they're trying to strike him out with a high fastball. Two two again, and Molina right off the end of the bat cues it down the first baseline and <laughs> stops it with his foot. <laughs> and then we'll make a friend for life <laughs> right <laughs> there. First, when George Henry played, he was better known for his bat. Not that he wasn't a good object, because he was, but he could hit. Molina takes it and a little further outside that time, three and two. Molina was looking back at Greg Gibson, the home plate umpire, to make sure. Well, yeah, he, because he's seen it. The strike zone has wandered a little bit. You could see from I went two and one he took to get back into the count. I mean, he, he, he they're trying to figure out a way to get on against Miguel Gonzalez. And there's another good fastball away. Three ball, two strike count. Gonzalez has shut down this Tampa Bay team on just two hits. The Orioles two runs on three hits. Three two weeders. Low and away. That's where it was, and it's foul back. Yeah, that three two count with a two run lead. It, it, you're not going to be nibbling. I mean, you, you may end up making a good pitch, but you got to throw it for a little bit more of the plate than you would if the count was different. And the 3 2 delivery. Oh, it's right there. Wow. Wow. Him up. wow. A 3 2 hook, and it's a good one. This is a gutsy pitch. This is the para paralysis curveball. You can't do anything but look at it. Right to the glove. Five strikeouts for Gonzalez and two down here in the fifth inning. And a great pitch to get him. And now Ben Zobrist top of the order. He'll take the pitch away. Zobrist has drawn a walk. 
and he has popped out. For Miguel Gonzalez in the previous starts, he had one strikeout against the Tigers, three against New York. He has already picked up five in this game against the Rays. 1 0 pitch, Zobris goes to the hole and he'll get a base hit. So Zobris, four game hit streak now, he delivers the single with two down in the fifth inning, each team with three hits. Well, I guess a kid up to the plate with a home run bat. Maybe not this year, but. Myers coming up as flied out and struck out. Yeah, rookie of the year last year, 293 hitter, 13 home runs. That's not even in a full year. We right. saw him hit one over the center field fence down in spring training. I mean, towering blast. Rays have hit 11 home runs this season, led by Zobrist, who's had three of them. Myers looking for his first. Two down, runner at first base. That'll be outside for a ball. Myers now with a one for eight in his career at bats against Gonzalez. Orioles have picked up their home run pace with nine now. They have given up 16 on the season. Four of them hit off Gonzalez. 1 0 delivery. Five. Is it fair? Mm. No. A foul ball again distance but on the other side of that fair play. Well what happens is that when Miguel gets to the stretch and there's somebody that can run he gets a little bit quick. So when you get quick you get side to side and you hang pitches and that was a hanging slider. That was a home run ball. And he got very fortunate that Myers was a little bit out in front and hooked it foul. Britain in the bullpen. Well this is all about the pitch count. We've been talking about it all afternoon. 97. Trying to get him through five here so he could be the pitcher of record. And it's really not that I mean he has walked three guys and he had some deep counts but they've just done a nice job of flicking pitches away. Nothing to show for it yet. Other than maybe getting them out of the game. One ball one strike runner at first and that's on the outside corner. Good location and a one ball two strike count on Myers. Gonzalez working at it here. Three walks surrender to course push that pitch, pitch count up a bit. He had only one walk in each of the first two starts this year. One and two. And Myers will take a big cut and miss it. Six strikeouts for Gonzalez. Two more in this inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on. And the Orioles have a 2 0 lead. By Mazda, Lombardozzi, Ryan Flaherty, and then the top of the order, Nick Marquez. 
The Orioles certainly have not minded the bottom third of the order coming to the plate. The highest average for seven, eight, and nine hitters. The Orioles right there at 267, Sox, Yankees, and Indians above. Well, you want balance in your lineup, and with uh, Manny Machado still on the disabled list, you're trying to mix and match. So when you get some of your players, and Steve Lombardozzi wasn't even with the ball club, the late addition, trade from uh, the Tigers. So. That'll be it for Miguel Gonzalez. Could be the winning pitcher. The Orioles will be going to their bullpen after the at bats. Lombardozzi, a strikeout victim. His first time up. A couple of hits and five at bats so far against Tampa Bay. But our easy pitch will miss inside. One ball and one strike. Now 74th pitch of the afternoon. Lombardozzi takes it the other way. The Jesus started back and then had to come in on it. One away here in the fifth inning. Flaherty grounded out his first time up. Learned something yesterday, and that's always a pleasure. <laughs> no matter what it is. I realize there's a right across from our great Bromo Seltzer Tower up here. Downtown Baltimore, 38 Utah Street. There's a there's a club, <laughs> which I've never gone into and don't intend to. But it's a three-story building that was originally that was owned by Babe Ruth, and I never knew that. And the folks over at uh, at Masson.com pointed me in the way of a uh, story at MassonSports.com to a story about it. In 1915, when the Red Sox won the World Series and Ruth was playing there. He apparently put the earnings in to buy the building for his father, who operated it as a bar and became known as Ruth's Cafe. And Babe Ruth and his wife lived upstairs in the building. And in fact, his dad ultimately was killed trying to break up a brawl in front of the building. And the building is still there at uh, 38 South Utah Street. Now, the original bar, of course, the Ruth family one that everybody talks about, is the one that was located in center field. Right here where this ballpark is now, but this was another bar that I had no idea the Ruth family had and the building is still there. Lesson learned. Yeah. Walk surrendered Flaherty on. That's the second surrendered by Odorizzi in the ball game. Marquez is a single and he is flied out. Hey, I like to see that, man. Ryan with a couple of hits on uh, Monday night. Some big hits, as a matter of fact. Now with one down. Nick Markakis, a one for seven so far in the series. Well, base runners open up holes. And uh, Loney has to hold him on. Doesn't steal a lot of bases, but runs well. And what that translates in, maybe the ability to score on a double or get the third base when guys with less speed wouldn't be able to do that. Lardy being held at first by Loney, a one count. Utter easy's delivery, and that'll be ripped to short. That's going to be a base hit. The Aces will get it back in. Flaherty stops at second base, and the Orioles two on and one down here in the fifth. Baseball on Masson continues later today with the Mid Atlantic Sports Report. Rob, Dave, Mel, and Phil, they'll be on hand with you from 5 to 6 30. Continued post game coverage, and Dave Johnson will be sitting down with Orioles starter Chris Tillman. It's coming up at 5 on Masson. Now, the reason I actually we ended up in a discussion about Babe Ruth with some folks in the office is that another baseball has been found signed by Babe Ruth. Coming out of a private collection, the ball's dated 2-14-23, and apparently was a ball that Babe Ruth hit out of the new Yankee Stadium before it was ever opened. There were some people working at the stadium getting ready to open it. There were two inches of snow on the ground. Ruth was in a business suit, went to the plate for the heck of it, and hit some balls out of the new Yankee Stadium. Signed one of them for one of the guys that worked there. His family kept the ball, and it's now going to apparently going to be going up for auction. It's signed by Ruth, and what's it worth? Well, the bat he hit the first home run with out of Yankee Stadium sold for 1.265 million. And the ball that he hit out sold for 126,500. 
So this is one even before that that he signed. And they've authenticated it apparently. So let's see what that one goes for. Oh, two count, one down. Cruz. He drew a walk, scored in the fourth inning. Weeders Hardy with the RBIs in that inning for the Orioles. Cruz will put it in the air. Right side, Loney Lone Chase. Nice catch. Runner tags and has to stay as Loney's able to get a throw into third base. Fine yeah. play. Well, one of the finalists, uh, Eric Hosmer of Kansas City Royals, won the uh, gold glove last year, but he was one of the finalists. He just takes one look to find out where the wall and the tarp is, and then I'm missing why they got him. Uh, Joe Madden saying, uh, talked about it on Monday, RBI guy, average guy, plus defender. It's about as good as it gets right there. And he turned around and got the ball back in. The flirt he could not tag and move up on. Yeah, he actually remembered how many guys were on. <laughs> well, I mean, that's part no, of it. I mean, guys absolutely. Do. Yeah. A few times this year we've seen the other occasions. Here is Davis, a single, a run scored, and he's been called out on strikes, so two on. Now there are two down. And Chris will take it away. Well, from the ball. people forget that the Orioles set, you've talked about this many times, the all time record for the least amount of errors was 54. But the team right behind them in Major League Baseball were the Rays last year. And they set the all time record, too, while the second best record yep. all time with 59 errors. So a very good defensive club. In fact, two teams would do that in one year is pretty amazing. Break the all time mark. The fewest errors committed. Both the Orioles and the Rays. One ball, one strike count, two down. The Orioles one for four. Today with runners in scoring position. Shift on against Davis with Escobar the shortstop behind the bag. Chris will take it up high out or easy two and one on it. I'll get one more Babe Ruth then for the Hall of Fame. They've got a new exhibit for the Babe that they've organized here for this season. Uh, it'll be a whole new look called Babe Ruth is Life and Legend. It's in like a storybook form, like a scrapbook. You go from the earliest days all the way through his career. That will be available all year long at the uh, Hall of Fame special exhibit honoring the Babe. 100th anniversary of his big league debut. Look down to second. Nobody there. Well, the, the, the thing that I find I mean, so I guess remarkable about Babe Ruth was that when he started hitting home runs, nobody else was. Not even close. No, I mean, no, yeah. when he had 57 home runs, I think he hit more than all the other teams collectively. So he was doing something that nobody else did. And that's why he's Babe Ruth. I mean, that's why his name is synonymous with hitting home runs. Yeah, he hit 60 and so on and whatever. I mean, 714, but. Right there for a strike. The fact that he was able to do something nobody else in that era could do was just amazing. And a larger than life story, persona. I mean, he put baseball on the map. There's not much question. There were other great players, but the babe had that had that it. A Ruthian clout. Yes, a Ruthian clout. Which is exactly what Chris Davis would like to do. Have a Ruthian clout for a crush. He might even take it. <laughs> well, there you go. He might even take a broken bat hit down the left field line. <laughs> Outfield deep in left and right. Three ball, two strike count. Runners go. And watching, they're loaded again. But are easy with three walks in the game. Hickey, the pitching coach, on his way to the mound. And again, it's going to be Weeders. Uh, Jones, rather, is going to come to the plate. Weeders waiting on deck. Second time. In the ball game, the Orioles have loaded him up. Yeah, this is an important uh, visit by Jim Hickey because I don't think he's wild. The, the walk he wants to take back was the lead, uh, the second to batter, and that was Ryan Flaherty. Uh, he kind of pitched very carefully to a guy that hit 53 home runs. We saw Brad Boxberg the other night really came in and threw the ball well, so he's getting loose. So 90 pitches. This is just in, in your first full year starting. Uh, to go out there and just say basically make a pitch. And Adam Jones with a bunt base hit, and there are the numbers with the bases loaded career wise. I think it'd be fun in here, even though they're going to give it to him again. So there are your base runners with Flaherty a walk, single Marquecas, walk Davis. Adam Jones. Orioles already lead 2 0. Could really open it up here, two down. And a chopper that's going to be an infield. Base headed an 
RBI right on the chalk. He didn't bunt it, but it was a perfect swinging bunt. He'll get an RBI, and the Orioles extend their lead to 3 0. Well, good two seam fastball. You get the results you want, but in order is he, I mean, heads up play because. He gets to it really quickly and then realizes I don't have a play, so I better let it go foul. And it's not going to. <laughs> so Adam Jones having success with the small ball. <laughs> He's had two hits that haven't reached third base yet. And he picks up the RBI. And the bases will remain loaded. Bradham RBI number six on the season, and here is Matt Wieters again, second time with the bases loaded in the ball game. He had a sack fly. RBI his first time uh, with the sacks full in the fourth inning. Loaded again, two outs. It's three runs on five hits now for the Orioles. And Wieters, as he did, and then he's the other at bat goes after that first pitch with a vengeance. I'm going to have to ask uh, Nicole McFadden, who's the head groundskeeper here, because of the great drainage drainage system they have here. Actually, is the field maybe sloped a little less? Because a lot of times, a lot of that ball would have gone foul, you know. And then you know, if you have a, a lot of speedy team, they slope the baselines. I mean, different teams have done it over the years. Chicago used to be like a, you know. Mud out there in front of home plate because they had all the sinker ballers and they water. If you have a fast team, they water first base so it's muddy so you don't get a good jump and all that kind of stuff. Be interesting as to how Buck wanted that because he has told her some of those things and a swing and a miss. Adam Jones doesn't want it changed. No, as far as the infield structure is concerned, <laughs> one and two. Well, he, he, he bonded and he had an infield roller. When you're not feeling well, sometimes you just have to take what you get. Go with the flow. Or the, the roller or the bus. Show up as a 2 3 in RBI. One ball, two strike delivery. Weeder's base is loaded again to center field. Jennings back again with Rome, and he's got it. So twice with the bases loaded. Adam's gotten some good wood on it to no avail this time. Orioles get a run in 3 0. The great play by Nick Markakis walking a base hit uh, to get him out of the fourth inning. Nothing, nothing ball game, and then the Orioles come back. Weeders with a like a ball is going to get out of here. Sacrifice fly first run, and then a bunt base hit, and then uh, the third run when Adam Jones gets the infield roller. Meanwhile, Miguel Gonzalez on his way to six strikeouts shuts him out to first to five innings. 
So his best outing of the uh, of the year so far. Three walks in the the six strikeout 98 pitch. And Jake Odorizzi might still be in there. Uh, gives up the three runs as Zach Britton will come on. That is Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15 percent or more on car insurance. And our Jiffy Loop pitching change. This pitching change should be quick, just like a Jiffy Loop signature service oil change. At Jiffy Loop, they get you in and out fast, and you never need an appointment. Left-hander Zach Britton goes to work in a swing and a miss by Joyce. Well, he's been uh, well scoreless in a couple of hits, throwing the ball exactly the way he did in spring training, which was outstanding. Sinker slider, occasional changeup, but in the roles he's used, he's primarily thrown mostly sinkers. The 0-1 delivery. Joyce has faced a left-hander only four times so far this year. He is 0 for four. Against them, an 0 for 1 lifetime against Zach Britton. That was written last year. He every start was against right handed pitching, with the exception the only three games he started against lefties were all against John Lester. Explain that. Yeah. Strike on the inside corner by Britton. Matt probably said, Joe, can you please explain to me why I'm playing Why am I Lester? playing against him? <laughs> Britain, the average against him in the game so far this year is 80. 0 8 0. Swing and a miss, and it'll go down a point right there. He gets the strikeout on Joyce. Well, not a great slider, but certainly effective because of the matchup. He'd like, probably like to throw it a little bit away, and he kind of hangs it. It backs up. I think Matt Joyce thinks he's going to break to the outside corner and swings right through it to the lefty lefty matchup. Evan Longoria, a couple of hits and eight at bats against Britain. Here in the ball game, he's 0 for 2. One down, nobody on. And Longoria takes it outside for a ball. Four left on so far by Tampa Bay, only one in scoring position. Orioles have left five with three of those in scoring position, including leaving the bases loaded in their last half inning. 3 5 and 0 for the Orioles, 0 3 and 0 for the Rays. Well, the Marquecas play on the line drive by De Jesus, that turned the whole game around, at least for Miguel Gonzalez. They kept him off the board. 1 1 slow roller, Flaherty, short hop, bring throw, off the bag, tag put on by Davis. Yeah, get rid of it quick in case uh, maybe it tails a little bit. Certainly not a routine play when you have to. To make it gets to it quickly, very athletic, uh, can play anyway. So you drop the arm, ball runs a little bit. Chris Davis off the bag to make the tag, and see uh, Kevin Longoria. I think he must have heard it. Yes, you can hear baseballs. He was covering up on the way down. I think he saw Davis move towards the yeah. ball too. Here's Loney, quick two outs for Zach Britton. A walk and he has flied out. And Loney will take the pitch. I was coaching first base in Elmira and Tuck McGraw was pitching for the Mets. And I could actually hear him throw the ball that night. Human night, mm -hmm. Elmira, New York, upstate New York. I'm going, that's amazing. <laughs> Big cut. Go oh, right to hang in. Yeah, 94. I mean, he hits everybody almost, uh, you know, almost a 300 hitter who gets righties and lefties. Loney three for 12 against left handers so far this season. 1 1 count, Britain. And yeah, we'll just miss a little bit down low. That was a dive bombing sinker at 94. Any of the Oriole questions? Can he do this as a starter? Two ball, one strike delivery. And that's going to miss just a little bit low. Three and one. Well, I think the thinking is uh, he probably could, but we know he can do this. And if you go back and you look at Arthur Rhodes, where Arthur came up, they started him. Not that he couldn't start, but he was just better than even. Long man, short man, could do so many things. Pitch for a long, long time. Three one pitch by Britton. That's right there for a strike. And then he will. Stay right there, and the count's three and two. I think, though, his best pitch is a sinker, and he can probably throw it more often in this role than he would as a starter. Not that it wouldn't be effective, but could he do it two or three times through the, the lineup? He two delivery, he'll get a chopper. Lombardozzi, the flip, and the up. 
So Britton comes on and retires the side in order. Bottom of the six coming up. Oriole Park, Camden Yards, Oriole City. It's not important except in the impact it has on other lives. And his impact on other lives enormous and continues on to this day. The Jackie Robinson Foundation in particular. And that has provided innumerable scholarships to young people to get them to college who otherwise would not have the chance to go. And that is a specific request that Jackie had for the foundation. That came out of UCLA, uh, I believe, and you know, a terrific athlete. You were talking about the uh, you know, trying to encourage uh, African American youth to play baseball. I remember Kenny Williams, who is now what uh, probably president of baseball operations, the general well, was the general manager with the White Sox, and that's I used to see him in airports all over the country. And that's that's the way he got back into baseball after playing. So we saw Brad Boxberg come and came over from uh, San Diego. They traded their left-handed pitcher Alex Torres. And he really threw the ball well. Very, very impressed. 94, nice little changeup, breaking ball. Came in and pitched in the 7-1 uh, loss that the Rays encountered on Monday night. Another, another part of the bullpen. Heath Bell out there, Grant Balfour, almost an Oriole. So they get a pretty good bullpen. Jake McGee, hard-throwing lefty. And we go to the bottom half of the sixth inning. Hardy will lead it off. RBI and a ground ball. 0 for 2 in the game, hitting a 267 on the season. So the two starters out of there, and both are the pitchers of record. And that one is a strike called. One ball, one strike count. Orioles in the fourth inning. RBIs by Weeders and Hardy. Sack fly in a ground ball. Adding another on a base hit by Jones in the fifth. The three runs in. 2 1 count on Hardy. Only runner in scoring position. They've only had two for Tampa Bay, first inning and fourth inning. And that double play, Jim was talking about Marquecos coming up with a catch in right field and throwing out the lead runner, Loney at second. Change that inning in the game. Fouled away. Count will hold it two and two. Offensive struggles continue for the Rays, and it's perfectly all right with the Orioles here. Two ball, two strike count. And jammed him, and we'll get the strikeout. Though so Boxberger with a K. Well, the Orioles, after seeing him, they know he's got uh, multiple pitches, and, and there's one of them right there. I mean, it looks like a changeup, so he's throwing you a bunch of hard stuff, and not only the movement, but the change of speed uh, gets J.J. Hardy. 
Now you know you're going to play the Rays another what 17 times after today and this game certainly not over by any means but you know how good they are you know until uh, Monday night they had won four in a row they had that last sweep where you think you're you're in the games and then you look at the scoreboard in the ninth inning and you realize we just didn't get a whole lot of runs that's the way they play. David Lowe Lowe with a no for two has popped out and struck out Labradozzi will be on deck. Boxberger with a 2 0 delivery and the off speed pitch taken outside for a ball. So the Orioles get the day off tomorrow, then head up to Boston for the big weekend. Chris Tillman, John Lackey scheduled to go in game one. That will be on Friday night. It is a mixed bag of timings. Saturday, Bud Norris and Felix Dubron, that is a 1 30 game. ESPN has the game. 7 o'clock on Sunday night and then of course the 11 a.m. game will be on Monday Patriots Day in right field Myers moves in puts it away David Lowe he is retired two down on Wednesday April 30 the O's host the Pirates fans get a I like our guys Orioles t-shirt it's the fun new design inspired by manager Buck Showalter's own words on his 14 team shirt will become an instant fan favorite don't miss out get your tickets 888-848-BIRD. The schedule will be Tillman Norris Jimenez and Chen going against Lackey Dubron PV and Buckholz. Buckholz is Schedule to pitch for the Red Sox in the ball game tonight against the White Sox. 1 0 count Lombardozzi. That one to left field, and that will fall in a base hit. A two out single in the sixth inning. And the Orioles pick up hit number six. Flaherty drew the walk and scored in the fifth inning. A couple of hits and five at bats in the series with the 0 for 1 so far this afternoon. Now yeah, two out hit on Monday and then another one up the middle. He's drove in a couple of runs. And Flaherty will take the pitch for the ball. Yeah, kind of fought it off uh, for the what, the second run the Orioles scored on Monday night. And we had the uh, the speed of the. The actually the ball off the bat the average is what 77 miles per hour. He happened to serve it in the left field at 55 miles per hour the speed limit. Double nickel hit. And it counted. RBI base hit makes you feel good. Didn't make Chris Archer feel good, but they all count. Oh, they? they do. Flaherty now has uh, had five games at third, six games at short. Scope has uh, disappeared for a couple of games here. 1 0 count, two down. Shift on against him. A couple of quick throwovers. Lombardozzi back to the bag on the dive. Well, let's see if uh, Ryan Flaherty can get a fastball out over the plate to hit. Wind picking up, blowing out to left. 1 0 delivery, runner not going. Big cut. One ball, one strike count. But Showalter was saying this morning for Dylan Bundy throwing breaking balls off the mound, and in Buck's words, that's the last step. He will now be ready. To go into rehab. The rest of this has just been kind of warming up. Runner goes. Here's the throw. Molina off the mark into center field. It'll be backed up. Going to go anyway. Jennings not charging it. Lombardozzi saw it and said, What the heck? So it'll be a stolen base and an error on Molina. So they do let him run. Uh, you know, hadn't stolen a lot of bases at the major league level. Not a great throw. It bounces, and then the play's in front of him, so he knows. And then Jennings, smart enough not to heave it by Longoria, and allow the Orioles with two outs to get another run. Hustle play. Good baseball. Steve Lardozzi, every day he shows he can help you win some other way. The bat, the glove, speed. Great acquisition.
So Lombardo's he's on at third base and a two ball one strike count on Flaherty. Boxberger's delivery to him line to left field and a fine diving catch by DeJesus. And that will end the inning. So no runs one hit one error and one left on base the Orioles on top three nothing. And here at the ballpark this afternoon, and for the Orioles, Miguel Gonzalez, solid five, chance to get a win, giving up just three hits, had six strikeouts. The Orioles taking advantage of opportunities, two in the fourth inning, added another, and an infield hit in the fifth by Jones. So far, the Jackie Robinson day here, so good fields. So my, uh, but the last player that was allowed to wear it uh, was Mariano Rivera, who was kind of grandfathered in. Yep, and uh, he has retired. Never again, except on these days, but no player will be given number 42 again. Here's Jennings, and the pitch taken for a strike. Zach Britton on the mound retired the side in order in the sixth in relief. Jennings a base hit, and he has drawn a walk. So let's see if they try to maybe bunt or somehow get on base. Mm -hmm. Tailing. <laughs> well, diving, tailing. 14 innings, the 14 pitches, the first inning for Zach Britton. Jennings only two for 16 off the left hander so far. Ideal lineup to bring the left hander out of the bullpen in. Joe Madden, of course, loading it for the righty. Britton, can I field it? Oh, yeah. oh yes. Well, you know, you talked about starting him, and obviously he's got three pitches, and but again, you know, if you start, you've, how do you field your position? He's had trouble doing that. He's very, you know, you play interleague, you hit a home run, beat out an infield hit down in Atlanta. So he's very athletic, and he did work very hard on his fielding. And he is healthy. So they're doing a lot of things to help you win ball games, and that's one of them. That was not an easy play. No, Britton retiring the first four that he faces. Forsyth, who started in game one, is going to come on as the pinch hitter. He was in the designated hitter role in the first game, ended up with an 0 for 3. So Logan Forsyth pinch hitting for DeJesus, who had an 0 for 2. And if you think about Zach Britton, it's about ground balls, so you better be ready to field your position. And the delivery on the way will be up high for a ball. A 1 0 count. One down and nobody on. Tampa Bay trying to find a way to get a rally going. It's few and far between. And you don't want to help Brandon him. Geyer now. They. Uh, are announcing is up there rather than foresight. When everybody's wearing 42, let's be honest, it's tough. No, everybody. 
I think this is fourth side. That's what I thought, but they put Brandon Geyer up on the scoreboard. No, that, no, that, no, that's fourth side. Brandon Geyer is a little blonder, maybe a touch younger. So it is foresight. Right the first time, foul back into the screen. It's so easy today, just as well, number 42 yeah. stands in. <laughs> Pinch hitting roll for Forsyth with one down and nobody on. Two ball, two strike count. And the pitch will be taken down low, trying to work a walk out here if he can get yeah. it just to get on base. He's two for two as a pinch hitter for Tampa Bay this year. And he'll take a uh, take the walk. They'll take anything. Escobar waiting on deck. Seven strikeouts have been recorded by the Oriole pitchers. Three walks surrendered. Gonzalez. 3 2 delivery and uh, a free pass there. Take a look at our Major League Notebook on our Bats Ahoy page. A little offense provided. Giancarlo Stanton, maybe nobody hits the ball further in this day and age than he does. 21 RBIs this year, the most by a player under 25 through the first 15 games since 1962. Prince Fielder finally got his first home run of the season. Last year, of course, with 25 of them. Johnny Peralta for the Cardinals, four home runs, 13 games. The Cardinals shortstops last year had four home runs for the whole season. Well, that's why they uh, spent $52 million to, to sign him. That's going to be a base hit into right field by Escobar. Marquez will hold the runner. First and second. And the first opportunity since the fourth inning really for the Rays. Yeah, all you have to do is go back to the fourth inning for the Orioles, and it all started with a walk. A leadoff walk. Well, this wasn't a leadoff walk because he got the first batter out. But the walk allows you to open up some holes, even though you're playing behind them, and then uh, Escobar has a nice at bat, crisply hits one into uh, right field. So Britain will be tested here in the seventh. Well, this Here's is where you need up. the ground ball, yeah. In spite of his stolen bases, two out of three last year, he would love a ground ball at one of your guys. That'll end this inning. One down, two on. Molina struck out twice. And he'll chop that one. It's going to be a tough play. Base hit. An infield single from Molina as he got it where nobody was. And they have loaded the bases with one down. Yeah, Jack Gretton's going to get to it, but it, it, I just think that he thought somebody else was going to catch it because if he catches that ball and sets himself, he probably throws Molina out. And he was uh, in a position to do it. So now, with the bases loaded and one away, the Rays threatening, and the top of the order, Zobrist, who's walked at a base hit and popped out, will come to the plate. The Rays, sacks full this year, have gone a one for five. The only hit picked up by Myers, which was a base hit. First chance for Zobrist this year with the bases loaded. And he did not get a good swing on that pitch by Britain. So this is when you have to relax and get back to just doing what you do best, which is trust your sinker. Zobrist had only one of his 12 home runs off a lefty last year and hit almost 40 points lower against left handers than right handers. And that will just wow. pass away one and one. I think he wanted that pitch. Well, the best chance the Rays have had in the ball game to put a run in comes in the seventh inning. The Orioles have the three nothing lead. A walk and two singles in this inning have set the stage. One one Zobris will take it up high and a two ball one strike count. Webb in the bullpen for the Orioles. And they're getting ready in a hurry. Zobris three for nine. Career off Britain. 2 1 delivery. Zobris down to third. Flaherty's got it. He'll go home. There's one. And that's what they'll get. Well, nice play. You, you can't turn two because he's in. 
So he comes in and right here, I mean, nice play. Couldn't have gone back and because of the way Zobris runs and tag third and go across the diamond. So they do cut off a run. And Zach Britton does what he's supposed to do, which is throw the ground ball, something he's done all spring long. If we have a minute here, we'll show you how Weeders took that throw at the plate under the new rules. Here's Myers, 0 for 3, bases loaded, two down, and a swing and a miss. The Orioles now keep their catcher behind home plate. Some, many of the teams have moved their catcher out in front to avoid the collision. See where Weeders is? He's behind the plate. Now that time he doesn't have to put a tag on anyway, so that leaves the plate open. He's not interfering with the runner. Runner has the full plate to come to. But when Weeders gets the ball, if there is a tag play, he can then step forward mm -hmm. and put a little block on if he needs to, so long as he's got the baseball. 0-1 delivery outside and a one ball, one strike. Yeah, he's always done a great job of um, actually on throws from the outfield, especially center field and right field, be able to angle his body and because how long his arms are, do sweep tags and kind of keep himself out of harm's way, but still be able to cover the plate. And you know, certainly not a Mike Sosha where you just literally block the plate and puts it up in the air. Davis will not have a play. The new rule on home plate collision that went into effect this year the runner may not run out of a direct line to initiate contact with the catcher and a catcher may not block the pathway of a runner attempting to score unless the catcher has the ball. It is an umpire's judgment on all calls. So John Farrell the Red Sox was the first guy thrown out arguing a call. That's where you're going to see some other, yes, you know, where it's a one of the, still the umpire, and they're going to review it, and they're going to change it, and um, managers are going to get tossed. <laughs> one, two, deliver to Myers, and did he go? New Bill Miller. Well, if you're on first base, this is what he's looking at. Sometimes that'll be a strike. Yep. Sometimes, sometimes they won't. Certainly not as a. The mantra of a swing as Saturday night against Tommy Hunter by Colby Rasmus, and then he hit the next pitch for a game time home run. But he keeps the bat alive and makes uh, Britton execute another pitch. 2 2. Big at bat right here. Big moment in the ball game in the seventh inning as the Rays looking for a big two out hit off the bat of Will Myers. Two strikeouts, a fly ball out in this game, 0 for 6. So far in the two games. And you can see where the pitch is there. The sinker running down and away. And Myers a big kick. He's got tremendous power. 2-2. Two -two, bases loaded. And he got him. Britton stays away and gets the strikeout. Seventh inning stretch time here at Camden Yards, where the Orioles have a 3-0 lead.
Nelson Cruz and Chris Davis do up for the Orioles in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Joel Peralta or Joel Peralta, depending on the year, comes on to do the pitching for the Rays. Well, as well as he pitched for him last year, you can call him Mr. Peralta. Uh, 80 games, 76 the year before, 71. And it just gets people out. You know, he makes good pitches. I mean, he's already fourth in the club history and uh, about 19 behind. So, really done a nice job. Uh, not a hard thrower, 90 91. Good split fingered fastball, a little breaking ball to go. And he's had a very, very good career. Zobrist is going to move to left field from second base. And Forsyth will stay in the ball game after pinch hitting, and he will play at second base. Yeah, so Ben, who can play everywhere, second game of the season in the outfield. Boxberger worked out of the bullpen for an inning. He gave up one hit, had one strikeout. The starter, Oder Easy, three runs on five hits over five. Miguel Gonzalez for the Orioles, chance to win his first game of the year. Gave up no runs, three hits over five. Zach Britton has worked the next two. And the Orioles will bat here in the seventh inning. Nick Marquez, two for three in the game, a couple of singles. No shift put on against Marikakis in this at bat in the infield. Peralta's delivery to him off speed, a one hopper to second base. Fourth, Scythe has it and throws him out. For every Orioles walk, Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield contributes $50 to support Be More for Healthy Babies. The Orioles have 28 walks, $1,400. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. With Jim Palmer, I'm Gary Thorne. Afternoon, fine crowd on hand on a really chilly day, seeing a real good ball game. As the Orioles have the 3 0 lead. Cruz up has drawn a walk and scored popped out a couple of times fine play made on him by Loney in his last at bat and the pitch will be up high to Nelson for a ball. Yeah there are some Orioles and may not. Well they maybe they will bat this inning because Chris Davis Chris Davis with a home run off Peralta four for twelve and then how about Matt Wieters I mean, really good numbers seven for twelve with a home run. 1 0 delivery to Cruz and another one up in the air towards second. Or first, look out. It'll be handled by Loney, the first baseman. And there are two away. And as promised earlier in the game, our ATT's fan Two down, nobody on. Chris Davis, he has singled and scored, struck out, and walked in the game. Do they have short sleeves on? Apparently. <laughs> Must be <laughs> the indoors. office here in the sun. <laughs> They're either that or indoors. <laughs> <laughs> they came out quickly <laughs> to get that picture taken. Two down. Maybe hovering over Boob's barbecue, <laughs> staying warm. <laughs> Outfield moves around, playing him to pull. Infield shift on. And Davis will take the pitch away for a ball. So Peralta gets a couple of quick outs in the bottom half of the seventh inning. One oh delivery to him. And Davis the other way. One ball, one strike count. Four for 12 with a homer off Peralta. Rays have been shot out a couple of times already this season. They've had two shutouts of their own. Orioles have been shut out, do not have a shutout. One one delivery on the way and a swing and a miss as he gave him the old off speed pitch right there. Yeah, the old split fingered fastball. One ball, two strike count. And then the other thing he does, and he started, Pedro Strope is now with the Cubs, where he'll 
in a stretch position not come and really use it as a windup. You now you see how he pauses. Sometimes he doesn't do that, which you can do. Ooh. Yeah, they nicked him. Where do you want to go when to try to get Chris Davis out? You'd love to be able to get it in. Most guys have better command away. So when you come in, and gets the bottom of that right elbow. Second time, Chris Davis has been plunked this season. And for Peralta, that's the first hit batter he's had this year. So Davis on at first base, two down. Well, he certainly gets out of the way of the, of the ball the right way, which is turning the shoulder. So you take away the wrist and the, the hands. Adam Jones, two singles, two for three, RBI on a rolling swinging bunt his last time up. Davis goes, swing and a miss, and then Molina can't get a throw here. And it'll be a stolen base for Chris Davis, who's running wild this year. That's right, two for two. Smart baseball. We've already seen uh, Adam Jones with a bunt to load him up. So right here, if they're going to play behind you or they're going to give you the stolen base, the only thing you got to worry about, and we're seeing a, an epidemic of guys sliding in and either hurting wrists or hands or whatever. Got to be careful. So Davis gets into scoring position, and Jones the 0 1 with two down. Peralta's pitch to him is going to be outside. Our Lexus of Towson drive of the game looks like this. Our drive of the game brought to you by Lexus of Towson, the area's number one Lexus dealer. Comes to you why at LexusofTowson.com. As we always say, in the box score tomorrow, it'll look like it was driven into the corner in left field. That's right. Nobody in Seattle will know that was a little <laughs> infield hit. <laughs> one one delivery on the way and that'll be fouled back. Well how about Jake uh, Odorizzi though well, you know on the play at first he did a slide didn't get a handle on then made a really nice play that one I mean, looked like a fumble recovery in the NFL I mean he got over there did everything right except the ball wouldn't cooperate it just stayed there. Should have given it one of those down on your knees blowing with the ball. Yeah, can't can't do that. Remember that? I'm trying to think who did that and uh, maybe uh, Lenny Randall. Changed the rule. L Lenny Randall of Texas. Yeah. Ball was rolling. He literally got down on his knees and tried to blow the ball foul. That is not reviewable either. A one ball, two strike count. Pretty good lead at second base. Davis and not trying to hold him close. So he'll get a good secondary. And a swing and a miss as Peralta went up high with it. So Peralta will pick up the strikeout and the runner stranded. Seven complete. The Orioles three, the race nothing.
Friday as the Orioles will be in Boston. Four games set. Chris Tillman, John Lackey, game one. Our coverage on Masson begins at 6.30 with those extra presented by Dodge, followed by our game coverage at 7. All the access you need right here on Masson. Well, there you take a look with the preview upcoming of a Red Sox team struggling a bit. Well, well they are. And uh, you know, all you have to do is start reading the, the papers, and they're not panicking, but uh, certainly they're, they're saying the joy right, I think, the way they described it the other day. Jory Rod uh, that they had last year on their way to 97 wins in a world championship, which really wasn't. I mean, you, you earn that. Mm -hmm. But uh, good news, bad news. Bad news are playing. Got guys hurt. Good news is there is a ways to go. The Orioles will find that out. So I think uh, Buck Showalter saying, you know what? They're going to send a lefty up there. I'm going to keep Britain out there, even though o O'Day is ready to bring in. And it is Matt Joyce. Joyce. Whoa. <laughs> That one well, there, I mean, you, you know, you kind of answer your own question as far as whether he could start. That's a real good breaking ball. So he's got three pitches he can use. Sinker has been terrific. He's got him out of the last inning. Down to first base. Chris Davis will play it. Joyce is retired. One away here in the eighth inning. He's one for four now. Celebrate Mother's Day with the Orioles on Sunday, May 11. The O's take on the Astros, 135. The first 20,000 women, 18 and older, will receive an Orioles Mother's Day cap. So gather up the family. Have a great Sunday afternoon at the yard. For tickets, go to Orioles.com. Monday coming up. One down. Here's Slagoria. 0 for 3 in the game. Strikeout, couple of ground ball outs. That'll go to short. Hardy up. Gotcha. Yeah, I got to imagine, uh, you know, this is a, a game where if you're pitching, you can maybe throw some more balls with, with the seams, get a little bit better feel. But if you're a, an infielder, outfielder, you're still trying to get the seams. Ball's got to be pretty slick. Feels a little bit different when it gets cold. Zach Britton uh, minor league numbers last year. He had almost a three to one ground ball ratio ground balls to fly balls. He did not have enough innings pitch to qualify to be among the league leaders. If he had. He would have been the minor league leader in ground ball to fly ball ratio. And he gets a couple of ground balls here in this inning. Well, they simplified it uh, in spring training. Dave Wallace and Don Cheedy coming on and said, hey, what do you do best? I sink the ball. Stop working about the mechanic. Get the feel of being able to do that. And that's kind of carried through six weeks in spring training and into the first two weeks of the season. 1 0 count. And Loney will foul that one back. Now the count goes to one ball and one strike. For Zach Britton, obviously you can get extended innings out of him in the bullpen. He had pitched a, a couple of innings against Toronto, got his second win of the season with two no-hit innings in that two to one 12 inning victory against the Blue Jays. Breaking ball, there it is again. I mean it just freezes the left handers. Yeah, as long as you don't hang it and speed up the bat, I mean it's a terrific pitch because you're you're looking 93 95. Now that's up a little bit. Still trying to get the feel on it. He's not real happy with it, but then on the other side it is he's not throwing it very much. He comes back with a fastball, just missed outside, two and two. Well, you're just seeing a much more confident guy. He's not, you know, he's he, he's one of these guys that you know maybe paralysis by over analysis and worried about my wind up, where are my hands and whatever, and kind of taking that out of the equation. Two ball, two strike delivery. Came back with another fastball down to first. That's a fair ball. The runner never left. Loney stayed right in the box. Didn't think it was going to be fair. Three ground ball outs. Three solid innings of relief for Britain, his longest of the year.
by authority of the Baltimore Orioles and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Baltimore Orioles. Chilling pictures, don't you think? That was the grounds crew working on the field this morning after the freezing temperatures last night. Orioles have the 3 0 lead, bottom of the eighth inning. Peralta worked an inning at a strikeout. Here's Gomes. Well, he, he goes from uh, being yesterday's starter, something he's never done on a major league level, to uh, coming in uh, to try to keep the game where it is, which is the Orioles with a three run lead, three to nothing. The hard thrower always has been able to get righties out. He will become much more effective, as most guys will, when you can both get righties and lefties out. He struggles a little bit about the lefties. Fastball, breaking ball, change up pitcher. So the Orioles trying to add runs. You want to make it easier for the back end of your bullpen. Now, Waiters will be leading it off against Gomes. Talked about how the Tampa Bay Rays have lost three of their five starting pitchers. At the uh, moment, including, of course, Matt Moore has decided to have the surgery on that left elbow, so he's going to be gone for about a year. Caused Joe Madden to uh, speak about all these Tommy John surgeries. Yep, Joe Madden saying uh, something that Buck Showalter has also talked about in the last couple of days. Sometimes you have to look underneath the surface. I tend to agree. It has a lot to do with youth sports, travel teams, multiple travel teams, kids pitching to win when they're really young, throwing too many pitches. I think the more recent epidemic, curiously, might be tied to what they're doing before they even get here professionally. That from Joe Madden. Foul ball. Buck Showalter, listen to how he echoed what Madden had said. The kids aren't aren't designed. You know, you're, it's designed to rest in the off season. And uh, I mean, they're doing things with 13 year old, 14 year old kids we wouldn't dream of doing in the big leagues. It's just overuse, most of it, and up down, up down. You know, I challenge the parents. You got to be your kid's best backer. Just say no. But uh, up here. Now, it's not the death sentence it was, but there's not. It's not a clear cut. Every one of them's going to be fine. A couple of managers who, not knowing the other, was saying that, saying really the same thing. Yeah, I think everybody's on pretty much the same page. Too much pitching, uh, breaking balls early. If you, if you ever coach anybody in little league, I had a chance to do it for three or four years. Most of the kids can't throw breaking balls, so you, they want to do it because it makes it easier to be successful. But very few kids' hands are big enough. There's a nice breaking ball for the strikeout, and so what happens is, uh, you know, everybody the peer pressure. They don't. If you want to be on the travel team, you can't play basketball or football, so you're not as good athletically. And the parents and Buck hit it right on the nose. He said the parents that actually understand it, and there are not a whole lot of them. Hey, let your kid go have fun doing other things, and you know. If he's good at baseball, why not let him fail a little bit at football or see how tough that can be or basketball or whatever the case is. But 24 hours, seven days a week, and it doesn't work for you. Nope. It's the old driving the kids because they're all going to play professional ball someday, which, of course, is far, far from not happening for most. And it's really, it's tough. And 13 major league pitchers this year are having Tommy so far have gone to Tommy Glenn surgery. Ball towards the gap by Hardy and a nice running catch made by Zobris for the second out in the inning. Follow every Orioles game all season long at MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. At bat brings you baseball wherever you are. Live look ins, instant replay, score stats, highlights, MLB TV game of the day, and classic games. Download award winning MLB.com at bat. Go to your app store or Orioles.com. Tommy Hunter, the Oriole closer. It is a safe situation. 3 0 lead. Getting ready in the bullpen. David Lowe 0 for 3 in the ball game. And Lowe will take the breaking ball up high for a ball. Yeah, I was looking at those names. I made the list uh, yesterday Chris Medlin and Brandon Beachy and Corey Guerin of the, the Braves. Corbin, who we saw last year with the Diamondbacks. Jared Parker, who we saw with the A's last year. And then you get the Mets closer, Bobby Parnell, Luke Cochever, who did a terrific job in the bullpen for Kansas City, Bruce Ron Rondon, who threw almost 100 miles per hour, and then 
Jamison, uh, I think Italian, uh, the, Italian the, yeah. yeah, the number one draft choice, hard throwing right hander for the Pirates. Those are the 13 guys already. And it's only already. Yeah, only. And then you can add Matt Moore to it, so it's 14. Not even through the month of April or close to it. Check swing and that will miss. Well, we talked about it when Toronto came in and actually Zach Britton did the same thing. I, they, a lot of people feel like if you can strength, strengthen the shoulder muscles, you know, everybody does rotator cuff, but the weighted ball program, Toronto's doing it. Brett, Zach Britton do it. It takes some stress over the elbow. So ground ball towards second base. Forsyth is there to play it. And that will retire low and the Orioles. The Orioles three outs away from getting a couple of wins against Tampa Bay. Ninth inning coming up. Baseball on Masson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find Southwest Airlines fares online only at southwest.com. And by Ocean City, Maryland. Put your vacation days to good use in Ocean City, Maryland. Book now at ococean.com. Gary Thorne, Jim Palmer here. The Orioles trying to shut it down right here and pick up their first shutout of the season. So Tommy Hunter comes on uh, three out of four in the save uh, category. Uh, if you're the closer, that's the one that counts. A lot of strikes. Did give up the game tying home run, ninth inning, 97 mile per hour fastball after it appeared that he struck out Colby Rasmus. He hit a high fly ball to deep right center field. So if you're the Rays, Tom, the one thing about Tommy, you know, you know he throws hard, 95 to about 98. He's got a breaking ball, He's got all kinds of pitches. But he doesn't walk a whole lot of people, so you will get some pitches to hit. But can you hit him? Jennings three for eight with a home run, lifetime off. Tommy Hunter will lead it off. He's had a single, a walk, and grounded out in the ball game, and takes the pitch for a strike. Tommy against the Rays, save wise, one for one. His overall record against them, two and four in his career. Here's the 0-1 delivery, and that's going to go to center field, and will fall in for a base hit. So Jennings starts the ninth inning off with a single for the Rays. Zach Britton worked three, gave up no runs, two hits, had a walk, and two strikeouts. Solid innings for the left-hander in relief of Gonzalez. Gonzalez could be the winner, pick up his first win of the year and go one and one. Odorizzi, the Rays starter, pitcher of record there, would be one and two if the score holds up. Here is Logan Forsyth. Came on as a pinch hitter, drew a walk in the seventh inning, and will take the pitch for a strike. Looking for the ground ball to get the double play right here. Doesn't throw a lot of grounders. Nope. He was a fly ball pitcher. Dominated righties last year. Lefties are the ones that hit him well. There's a ground ball to short. Hardy's got it. There's one for the first. Not in time. Well, yeah, not hit hard. That's one of those plays, and it, as it turns out, you know, J.J. wants to at least give his second baseman a chance to turn the double play, but 
The ball stayed down a little bit. When the ball stays down, for the first thing you have to do is stay below the hop, which he's able to do. And you could see him back up. And the minute that happens, you know they're not going to turn two. But they do get an out. So they get the out for one at first base. Foresight. That'll bring Escobar up. Escobar single, one for three in the ball game. Yeah, if they can get another runner on, uh, that's one of the first steps they can do. Obviously, bring the tie and run to the plate. Escobar has faced Hunter a ton. Seven for 22. That's a 318 average with two home runs. Well, high ball hitter, high ball pitcher. Forsyth, the first one out. And Al Escobar puts it in the air. Marquecas going over. Into that corner and will make the catch. Runner halfway will stay at first base. Yeah, nice play. Team routine, but not on a day like this, as bright as it is, and the wind blowing. And there are two down. So Hunter, one out away from wrapping up the ball game, and the Orioles could take both of these games played. And now here comes Brandon Gar. Finally, he will get to the plate, hitting for Molina. Molina had a base hit and struck out twice. Dyer yeah. with a runner at first and two down. Yeah, no left-handers on the bench. Sean Rodriguez and, uh, and then uh, Ryan Hannigan. Well, the fans up. Dyer one for three as a pinch hitter. 182 overall. In at third base, Flaherty. Dyer swinging, pops it up. It'll come back and out of play. 0-1 count, two down. But show all this ball club back to 500 if they can get the win here, seven and seven, and would send Tampa Bay to a seven and eight mark. And start the season out with a couple of wins against this Rays team that won the season series last year. Runner going and a swing and a miss will take second base. And it'll be defensive indifference. 0 oh, 2 count from under. Yeah, not only did they win it, they won it 13 to 6. So pretty much the second half of the year dominated the Orioles. And 6 out of 9 here. 0 yeah. oh, 2 count. Dyer takes it outside. Day off tomorrow, Boston on Friday night. The Orioles' next ball game, the big four game set against the Red Sox. Johnny Hunter, one two delivery. Yeah, fastball pitcher with a, uh, yeah, he's got a slider, he's got a cutter. The guy are just trying to make contact somewhere, maybe put a ball in play. Tommy trying to strike him out or pop him up. 22,611 for this noon game. 22,611. The announced attendance. Timeout asked for it to play by Goddard. Runner off second, one two delivery. Dyer <laughs> refusing to go easily here. It stays a one and two. Well, talk about an emergency hack to try to stay alive, and he's able to do it. Orioles in this one. RBI is picked up by Weeders and Hardy in the fourth inning. RBI on the bunt, on the swinging bunt base hit by Jones. Those are the three runs. Each team six hits. One two delivery. Geyer. Good take. And a one ball two strike count. Well, you can see high ball pitcher did try it when he got the two strikes from a 97 mile per hour fastball missed down and away. Hunter's delivery and he struck him out and the Orioles won it. Tommy Hunter comes on and will pick up the save in the game. 
Gonzalez a win. Odorizzi takes the loss. And the Orioles take the two games played in what was supposed to be this three game set, winning the opener 7 1. And this one, the first shutout of the year, 3 0.